Uh, my character would be protecting the royal family. You can't do nothing. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up, <laughs> if you want. Oh, today we are diving back into r slash tales of neckbeards, starting off a new saga from user Tiny Harry Potato, <laughs> which is just a beautiful username, I gotta say. This is the saga of Linkbeard, part number one, and I had to jump into it for two reasons. One being that I absolutely love Zelda. Link is the man, so uh, let's take him down a peg or two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then the second reason is because the first part was posted two months ago, but dude keeps on posting. Like, he didn't just post one part, see if I picked it up, and then start pumping out the parts. Nah. He got all the way up to part six without any sort of prompting, and I gotta respect that. <laughs> Dude either just really likes writing stories or he knows how to tickle me, but not in the weird way. You know, not in the way that my wife tickles me. <laughs> we're not gonna talk about that, though. Oh, God. I guess we're starting off with the cringe early. Let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive into some tales of Neckbeard's cringe. Also, subscribe to my podcasts. <laughs> the Legend of Linkbeard, Part 1. The quest begins. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. <laughs> here, take this. What's in here? <laughs> <laughs> Greetings everyone, long time lurker, first time poster, hello tiny hairy potato, <laughs> so glad to have you with us. After listening for a while, I thought I would grace you all with my interactions with the one, the only, Linkbeard. Now, this is not only a neckbeard story, this is also a D&D &D horror story. And I know some people been looking for that on the channel, so we're glad to bring in some RPG horror story stuff as well. You gotta love that big combo wombo. Anyways, some relevant background about me. I'm a mid-twenties female. <laughs> Tidy hairy potato is a female. I didn't expect it, but okay. Nerdy. Horror buff. Knower of random trivia facts. Overweight. And I have some hormonal problem that makes me grow facial hair. Maybe that's Picos? Mmm, that's pretty common. More common than you'd think. I'm also an ace bisexual. I like boys and girls, but I'm not interested in sex at all. So, this legend of neckbeardery happened in the mythical land of Australia. Back in the before times. <laughs> before lockdowns and plagues happened around the world. Yeah, I, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> I, a humble potato, was hanging out with one of my mates playing Smash after going shopping for, uh, stuff. He was getting shoes and I was looking for art stuff. Probably paints. God, I love shopping. Shoes and art stuff ain't what I shop for, but I'm going on a shopping spree tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna fill my house up with stuffed animals and video game stuff. <laughs> Anyways, my friend, Dungeon Master, because he is forever Dungeon Master by choice, was talking about a new game that he was putting together with some of his uni friends, and he asked if I wanted to join in as well. I had played D&D &D a few times when 5th edition came out. My uncle tried to show me how to play 3rd edition. <laughs> that didn't really work out because I was small and was later diagnosed with dyscalculia, so that probably added to that problem. You know, math rocks and all that. I'd like to say hey samesies because that would give me a good out for never passing an algebra class. But um, <laughs> I spent too much time looking at my analytics to really be like, okay, I 100% don't get it. Because I understand like percentages and fractions pretty well. But yeah, we get to algebra. Y you lost me. Good thing D&D is pretty simple. <laughs> Relatively. It'll be fun, said DM. You know, I've run a few games. I ran that one shot that we all played around Christmas. 
You can't say it wasn't fun to smash Krampus in the face with a candy cane sword. Ha! Oh. <laughs> it does sound pretty fun. True. You don't mind if I have my phone out to do the maths, right? Nah, it's totally fine. I know you're shit at math. <laughs> Didn't you only just pass basic math in high school? Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, don't rub that in my face. So, what's the setting? Another homebrew thing, or is it a pre-written game? It was there. The dungeon master's eyes lit up. And it was also there that my Princess Peach was able to peach slap Fox off into oblivion. Oh baby, Peach mains unite. <laughs> Turn up spam forever. Dungeon Master didn't care, as he went on to tell me all about a homebrew world that he had been working on for years. Legend of Zelda D&D. &D. Well, my favorite game of all time is Legend of Zelda. I love all the cool and creepy backstories that you can find by doing all the side quests and just exploring in general. At this time, Breath of the Wild had just come out for about two to three months, and I had several hours into the game already. Now, I ain't here to judge nobody. I'm not going to tell you to game more or anything like that. I I'm just glad you're having a good time. It's really hard for me not to gatekeep that, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's just be aware of our own inadequacies so that we might fix them someday. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Oh, so we would basically be playing a game set several decades after the events of Breath of the Wild. There's no Zelda and no Link. So our group would be tasked with setting out to save Hyrule in the absence of the princess and the hero, which I thought was pretty awesome. Lots of cool stuff happened in Hyrule without those guys hanging around. Like in Ocarina of Time, there's the story of the Seven Sages, and that's a pretty cool concept. Okay, I'm in. How far are you away from getting this up and running? I asked. So for the rest of the afternoon, I spent time with Dungeon Master going over all the character sheets that he had made. He had homebrewed the main races from Breath of the Wild, Hylian, Zora, Goron, Gerudo, and Rito. It was amazing how much effort he had put into it, and it really made me happy to see how excited he was. He was happy with me making any character. His only restrictions when it came to race was that all Gerudo are female and all Goron are male, which, lore speaking, that made sense, so I was cool with it. Yeah, we're playing a Goron paladin, for show. Sure. <laughs> I ended up making a Gerudo fighter. My DM then told me the time when we would meet up at his place for the game, which was in about a week. He said some of his friends from uni and work were going to join, and I was cool with that as well. Man, I don't know about that, OP. <laughs> I'm not so down to sit down and play D&D with a bunch of randos. I gotta be with people that I trust, which is probably why I don't play D&D as much as I could. But at least when I do sit down to play a game, I know we're all in, like, the same headspace, you know? It's kind of hard to meld everybody together <laughs> if you don't really know each other outside the game. Eh, my experience anyways. So, that's the setup. Now let's get into the meat of this story of D&D Neckbeardery. Here's the cast, named after their D&D characters, except the Neckbeard, because, yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> the cast coming a little bit late, but uh, no judgment on that. DM, way too patient and forgiving. Potato, that's me, playing a Gerudo fighter. My mother was a jeweler and my aunt taught me how to fight as she was part of the town guards in Gerudo Town. Gerudo Town. <laughs> come on, you gotta come up with a name for it. Ludo was a Zora cleric, apprentice to a much more powerful Zora sage mostly a pacifist, and the voice of logic in the group. He has played cleric characters before, and he's really good at getting us to see reason without talking down to us or sounding condescending. Akira, a Hylian artificer from the Sheikah tribe, deliberately played a, a lone wolf kind of character, but is literally just a Hylian teenager going through his rebellious teenage phase. He's out in the world trying to discover himself and his place in the world. I mean, throw in some dead parents and <laughs> that guy's giving me some serious that guy vibes. But I guess I won't judge too quickly. I'll, I'll see how it goes. Ori was a Goron Barbarian. Yes, 
a gentle giant that set out to find more tasty rocks to eat and to trade gems. He is Nina's boyfriend. And Nina is a Rito druid. She was going to explore all of Hyrule and document all manner of animals and plants beyond the region that was Rito territory. Also girlfriend to Ori. Well, that's good. I'm glad that's a two-way street. <laughs> Might have been worried otherwise. And of course, we've got our neckbeard, Linkbeard. A Hylian ranger, fighter, multi-class, and yes, the neckbeard of the story. His family was killed by Yiga clan assassins when he was a baby. <laughs> There's the that guy vibes. God damn it. It was only by chance that a passerby saved his life. Became a knight in Castletown to protect Hyrule, dedicated to the goddess Hylia. He will die for her. Simps hard for Zelda since she's basically a Hylia incarnate. Probably has a hard on for her. Thank God he's sitting down at the table. <laughs> I got to DM's place with a shopping bag full of snacks to share and a one liter bottle of Coke. Gotta be a good house guest after all. DM quickly introduced me to Ori and Nina. Ori was a pretty bulky dude, like the guy was ripped. I later found out he did go to the gym and was taking a course to be a personal trainer. Hey, just like train a Nico in the Discord server. That's a cool guy. Nina herself was a very curvy woman, and upon meeting me, immediately offered me a cookie. It was, of course, delicious. That seems a little strange, but I'm not here to judge anybody's relationship dynamic. Opposites do attract, after all. So, how do you know DM? Asked Dory. High school friends, I said. I can't seem to lose that dumbass. <laughs> you love me and you know it, said DM. Soon, Ludo and Akira showed up. Ludo was a skinny, twink-looking guy with... <laughs> Can we say that? I guess we're saying that. Good to see you. Twink. And he had glasses. He made small talk, but seemed to be pretty shy about being around people. Not that I blame him. Being pretty introverted myself, I didn't try to force him to talk. Akira was a little hyperactive and talked pretty quickly. He actually reminded me a lot of my sister, who also talks really quick and really loud. After the introductions were done, the final member of our group came in. Linkbeard. Now, Linkbeard wasn't overweight. He was a relatively average looking guy, but he had a scraggly pube beard <laughs> and wore a Slipknot t-shirt. <laughs> His hair also looked a little too shiny, kind of greasy, and he did have some orange Dorito cheese dust on his lips. Ugh, I hate it. <laughs> and in his scraggly beard. How hard is it to wash your mouth? How hard is it to eat like a human? Ugh, pretty difficult with your beard, I suppose. <laughs> now, at this point in time, I had known that going to play a game of D&D &D meant that I was probably going to meet some people that weren't very well versed when it came to personal appearance. <laughs> Heck, I usually wear sweatpants and a t-shirt, so I decided to give Linkbeard the benefit of the doubt, something that I would later come to regret. I mean, the bastard didn't even turn up with snacks or drinks. Everyone else did. Yeah, he's just there to poach everybody else's snacks and drinks. Scumbag indeed. Hey, sorry I'm late, guys. <laughs> He wheezed. Hey, my fucking boss was being a bitch again. Nah, it's cool, haha, <laughs> said DM. All bosses are bastards anyways, am I right? No. <laughs> I'm my editor's boss. I think I'm a pretty good boss. Just grab some snacks and we'll head to the table, okay? So we all sat at the table and I ended up sitting at the end next to Nina with Ori on her other side. I then noticed the slightly annoyed look and eye roll that Linkbeard did as he reluctantly sat down by Ludo. It was at this point that I realized that Linkbeard was either going to be a neckbeard or a simp. Dungeon Master's pretty good at stamping out bullshit and stopping it from getting too far, as a good DM should. Heck, in the session zero where DM helped me make my character, he made me write a list of things that I am not cool with so he can exclude it from the game. 
The guy even has a safe word that any of us can say if we start going down a road that makes us uncomfortable. It's Jumanji, by the way. <laughs> Jumanji! Jumanji! Oh, we should probably do that at uh, some of my D&D games. The last session got a bit out of hand. My human neckbeard paladin <laughs> ended up butt-chugging a bottle of wine with the help of our uh, half-orc barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, fun was had by all, I hope. So, Dungeon Master gave us a quick rundown of his house rules to make sure that we were all on the same page. Okay guys, few rules before we start. No graphic sex, like fade to black only. No rape, no pedophilia, and no animal fucking, Akira. Uh oh, that's not good. <laughs> Akira rolled his eyes while laughing. I make one joke where the punchline is horse dick. Once! Whoa! I assume that it might have been a My Little Pony thing. Yeah, that still doesn't excuse <laughs> that. Don't do that. I guess Akira's kind of a weird guy. I probably shouldn't have given him the John Travolta voice, but we could shift it into a neckbeard voice if the need arises. So, we got started, and the setup was pretty good. We didn't meet in a tavern, but during a made-up holiday dedicated to the goddess Hylia. People from all over Hyrule came to Castle Town to celebrate. The DM was even cool enough to set up some carnival games for us to play to make sure that we were used to all of the mechanics. Ori was a D&D &D virgin, after all. Oh, look at that boy popping his cherry! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of him! The DM sets us up, and we all start to roleplay a little, meeting each other, and it's generally a good time. Ludo walked into Ori, who just finished one of those strong man hammer and bell games. Nina found the broody Akira, who then ran into me to try and get away from the over-inquisitive Rito. And then the problem started. As you two bump into each other, a town guard happens to see this happening, said the DM. We were all expecting Linkbeard to introduce himself, Walk up and maybe ask Akira if he was trying to rob me or something, but he didn't. He just stayed quiet. Um, Linkbeard, that's your cue. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the first rule of D&D &D is yes and, <laughs> said Linkbeard in a gravelly kind of voice. What do you mean it's not your cue, asked DM. I just gave you an opening to introduce yourself to the rest of the party. No, my character wouldn't be out in the town. Then where would he be? asked DM. And, oh boy, I had a feeling I knew where this was going, and I was riveted. This was going to be a ride. Uh, my character would be protecting the royal family. <laughs> said Linkbeard. Oh, you be kind of like a guard. <laughs> DM just looked at Linkbeard with a deadpan expression. Linkbeard, you're only a level one fighter. <laughs> you're also just a town guard. Probably only been on the job for like a year tops. No one would make a level one fighter a royal guard. That's just stupid. <laughs> Oh boy, fuck your seatbelts. <laughs> a ride it shall be. Linkbeard looked indignant. Uh, what, what about my backstory? I have to. We talked about this when we were making your character, said Dungeon Master calmly. Everyone is starting at level one. You can aspire to be a royal guard, but you are not a royal guard. You're just a guard. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Fine, grumbled Linkbeard. Thankfully, after that little hiccup, most of the session went pretty smoothly. Linkbeard met up with Akira, Nina, and I, and then because of some slapstick shenanigans, Nina ended up slapping Ludo with her wing, and the group met up with Ludo and Ori. It was good. We got some good character moments. Akira attempted to be all dark and moody. <laughs> But Nina had pretty much adopted his character as her son already. <laughs> it was hilarious. 
Throughout the roleplay, I noticed that Linkbeard seemed to be a little moody, possibly because he was not allowed to pretend to be a royal guard. I mean, you want your character to be what you want your character to be. I can kind of see where Linkbeard's coming from. The, the one that I'm really side-eyeing at the moment is Akira. <laughs> what is this dude gonna do? And then we heard trumpets, and the king and queen of Hyrule came passing by on a carriage. Dungeon Master describes how we see them coming by and waving at the people and asks us what we do. We all said a little bit of what we were doing, a bit of flavor before the bomb drops, and Linkbeard kind of loses his fucking mind because, surprise, it's a Yiga clan attack. It was actually a pretty good and interesting fight. We were all able to team up and kick some Yiga clan ass. During the fight, when we killed most of the clan, the DM let us know that the Yiga clan had managed to injure and incapacitate several of the royal guards, and were going to attack the king and queen, which was when the DM dropped the bomb that the queen looked pregnant. Like, maybe five months. Hey, that's how far along my wife is at the moment, only showing slightly. And my god, how beautiful she is. Truly, we are blessed to have such a gorgeous queen of the Red X Nation. But I digress. <laughs> Since Linkbeard and I were closest to the carriage, we were the ones that noticed the pregnant queen. Either way, Linkbeard went nuts, naturally assuming that the queen might have been carrying the reincarnation of Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> he stopped fighting the Yiga that he was previously stabbing and directly ran to help the queen. My character called out to the rest of the party that the queen was pregnant, and I immediately ran after Linkbeard and the rest of the royal entourage. Yeah, this is falling apart pretty quick, isn't it? <laughs> the king and queen are getting cornered by some Yiga, and it looks like they're going to try and kill the queen. Linkbeard was obsessed with protecting the queen, which... Yeah, it was all fine and dandy, but he used his bonus action to tell the queen that he would protect a milady. The motherfucker actually said milady, <laughs> which is rare, but it does happen, especially to uh, imaginary girls. At least the queen won't be offended. If any milady is to be milady, this is probably a queen, right? <laughs> <laughs> ha. So we do end up saving the royal family. All good, right? Wrong! Dungeon Master asks us all for our passive perception. Nina had the highest, and only managed to see just the glint of an archer's arrow just before they shoot it, and it hits the queen. Right in her belly. Aw, oh, this DM is cruel. I don't like that at all. Hey guys, no graphic sex scenes, but we're gonna be killing unborn children. <laughs> Okay, Jumanji. <laughs> I don't like it. Everyone was pretty shocked by this. I mean, Legend of Zelda did get pretty dark, but never explicitly straight up stabbed the fetus. Yeah, this is not good. It felt like DM was really setting the tone for the game to be a much darker and much more mature game. <laughs> Bullshit! Read, Linkbeard. We went through all that bullshit, and the queen and the baby died anyways? <laughs> Fuck you, man! Hey, calm down, whoa, said Akira. I mean, DM said there was no Link of Zelda in this. Maybe it was splitting off into a fourth timeline, like a, a super fallen timeline, man. It's still bullshit. It isn't a Zelda game without Zelda. What about Link's Awakening, I asked. Majora's Mask? No Zelda in either of those. Still pretty cool Legend of Zelda games. Linkbeard actually went red with anger. It was comical. Zelda was 100% this guy's waifu. And holy shit, <laughs> this dumbass could not handle the fact that said waifu just got yeeted via arrow. I was convinced that Linkbeard might try and find a way to resurrect Zelda. Yeah, resurrect that fetus. <laughs> that would have been fucking hilarious. I honestly live for this kind of chaos. Dungeon Master just took a sip of his drink. Come on, guys. Trust me. I gotta give you guys the main quest before I let you do all your own shit. So, Linkbeard calmed down a little and ate a cookie. 
As it turns out, the queen wasn't pregnant at all. Oh, wow. That's a load off my mind. I suddenly like the DM just a little bit more. <laughs> she was just wearing a sandbag to make her look pregnant because this woman was not the queen. The real queen had a premonition many years ago about the Yiga clan coming to kill her and her unborn child as told to her by Princess Hylia, alluding to the fact that there might actually be a Princess Zelda out there. We were also told that the king and queen had made a plan. The queen would immediately leave with Impa to a secure location to have her child and keep her safe from the Yiga clan and anyone else that would want to kill her and eliminate the possibility of Zelda being reincarnated. The king then appointed us as the heroes that would seek out and bring back Impa, the queen, and the new baby. Oh, don't trust Linkbeard with that. He's gonna make it real weird with that baby, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> It was all a pretty interesting idea. I mean, I liked it. It would take us all over Hyrule, get us into all kinds of cool adventures and side quests. I was really excited, and everyone else seemed excited too. The king suggested that we head to the Sheikah village, as that's where Impa would likely have taken them first, and they might have left a clue as to their whereabouts now. We decided that it would be a good idea to end it there, since Linkbeard needed to leave now to get to work. Wow, he has a job. <laughs> Same with Ludo, and since Akira was his ride, those three left pretty quickly afterwards. Linkbeard took one of the unopened bags of Doritos that I had brought. What a dick move. That is so outside the line. Did he like ninja sneak it, or did you just not say anything? Because I would have called that out instantly. Like, bro, I paid for that. <laughs> you give me, what is it, like five or six bucks? I ain't having you walk away with my money. <laughs> Fuck you. Ugh. After they were gone, Dungeon Master asked Nina, Ori, and I what we thought of the session. We gave him feedback, and Nina lightly slapped his arm. So that's what you meant when you were talking about a sandbag? I didn't think you'd pull that in the first session. Dungeon Master laughed and grinned like the biggest dork. Yeah, <laughs> thought I'd quickly get that out of the way. Promise that there won't be anything else like that. What did you think, Potato? I kinda shrugged. You know me, I would've been fine with a bit of blood and gore. Might wanna keep an eye on Linkbeard, though. He's giving off a bit of a neckbeardy vibe. Kinda weird that he's so obsessed with Zelda. I mean, yeah, she's cute, I guess, but maybe you should figure out if he wants to fuck Toon or Child Zelda or the older teenage versions. <laughs> I don't think we need to go down that rabbit hole, OP. Honestly, let's just assume the best until we find out the worst. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't want to put any pressure on that. Ugh. I mean, it's still not cool if he wants to fuck Teen Zelda, but, you know, better than something that looks like a child. Ori agreed with me. Yeah, kinda weird. Where did you meet him, dude? In the chopper? <laughs> oh, I met him on campus, said DM. He seemed like he needed a friend, so we talked a bit, and he seems pretty cool, so I thought, why not? Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, Chief. I mean, Akira and Ludo seem to be okay with him, so let's just give him a chance, okay? I agreed, because I'm an idiot, and I trusted Dungeon Master to make good friends. I mean, he usually does, but not this time. Not this fucking time. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed part one of this saga. I'll admit, it wasn't as bad as other Beard stories, but believe me, it gets worse. Much, much worse. I'll post more when I have time to. Until then, stay safe out there. I mean, yes, there are sus vibes coming from Link Beard to be sure, but... How is Akira just <laughs> going under the radar? I guess because there's a bigger beard hanging around and Akira hasn't done anything uh, overtly terrible. But then again, neither has Linkbeard. I mean, he's obsessed with the Queen and Princess Zelda and stuff. I still suspect he's gonna make it really weird with that baby. <laughs> but Akira being all moody and edgy and stuff, I mean, that's not a vibe that I go for in my D&D games personally. But I don't know, 
uh, different strokes for different folks. If everybody's okay with it, then uh, who am I to say poo poo? You know what I'm saying? Wait, who's the dude that's like into banging horses or something like that? <laughs> The Legend of Link Beard, Part 2, Petty Pony Problems, <laughs> Peter Piper picking pickles over here, yeah, we're gonna see some Epona action, Link can't be Link without Epona, isn't that the truth? Well see, here's the problem, Link Beard, you're not actually Link, the hero of time does not exist in this D&D &D game, or it's not even D&D, &D. it's just a generic <laughs> RPG horror story. And I hope I can remember which voices I gave to who. Let's see. Hello, everyone. It is I, Potato. Hi, Tiny Harry Potato. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you all the next part in the tale of Linkbeard. Sorry, I hadn't posted the next part sooner, but, you know, life happens. Food poisoning happened, and I tried and failed to build a smoker. No, don't smoke. Oh, you talk about, like, smoking meats or something like that? Is that why the food poisoning happened? <laughs> I got a lot of questions here. But yeah, I did pick this series up largely because Potato just continues to write. So I'm like, oh, snap. We got a whole saga laid out before us. Just beautiful. Six parts. I can dive on in and I don't have to worry about like when the next part is coming. Which is a good tip if you're really trying to get your story read. Anywho, to sum up the previous story, my friend Dungeon Master decided to run a Zelda-themed homebrew game. Sounds good. And really, it was going fine. And the only really weird thing that happened was Linkbeard's obsession with Princess Zelda. <laughs> I would like to say that most of the conversations are paraphrased from my mashed potato memory and retellings from others within the D&D group, mostly uh, Dungeon Master. See, the first one is not too bad. <laughs> I think we're going to start cranking it up in the next one. So far, it was just whatever. Linkbeard didn't seem so bad. He was mildly annoying at most so far, but his beard tendencies weren't super prominent, at least at that time. Somebody pointed out that when he stole a bag of chips at the end of the game, entitled to other people's stuff, that was a good call. Definite beard move there. But uh, I think we're going to get a little bit more of that today. Because in part one, if anything, we were just seeing the very tippy tippy top of the gigantic fedora clad iceberg. <laughs> Once again, gathered at Dungeon Master's house and we all started up session two. So in this particular saga, it all revolves around a horse. Yes, a horse. A fucking in-game not real horse. Wait, who's the dude that's like into banging horses or something like that? <laughs> we gotta be very careful with phrasing when it comes to horses. I think Akira was his name, but I mean, don't do that to horses, even if they imaginary. <laughs> Just please, please don't. Really, the whole thing is so fucking stupid. Also, side note, Linkbeard was once again annoyed that I sat next to Nina and Ori, Nina's boyfriend, sat on her other side. And on another side note, Linkbeard didn't bring any snacks. Again. Now's the time to address it. Be like, look, you gotta pay the troll toll. <laughs> Give me some chips if you want to sit on this game. I've been sitting around preparing all week and you can't even fill my belly. Although, usually I think the, the dungeon master is the one that's like expected to provide, which is totally fucked up. Then the players just show up and have a good time and one person's stuck with all the work. Ugh, like every group project ever. <laughs> but I digress. Things went well for the first hour or so, with us traveling to the Sheikah village. We fought a few monsters and had a few random encounters. Dungeon master prompted us a few times, ever so slightly to promote some role play to build up our characters' relationships with each other, and it was actually really cool. Ah yes, my little band of misfits traveling all over uh, Hylia, Hyrule, or wherever, I guess. <laughs> There's a lot of settings in Legend of Zelda. It's not all Hylia, Hy Hyrule, 
What the fuck is it? <laughs> I think it's high roll. Why don't we go run around Clock Town for a little while? See how that goes before the moon crashes into us and kills us all. <laughs> but anywho, Ori and I bonded over gemstones. As in game, my mother was a jeweler, and Ori was a Goron that lived on Death Mountain. So there were plenty of gems up there as well. Although uh, he's probably more interested in eating them as a Goron. <laughs> I don't really remember too much about what everyone else was talking about, but I do know that we got some good bonding experiences out of that. All except Linkbeard. He wasn't very talkative, and seemed to be more antisocial and lone wolf than Akira. Akira was made to be the special snowflake, lone wolf type. Then things suddenly changed when we got to the horse stable. There we learned that there was a large field behind the stable, where wild horses roamed. Ah boy, here we go. Whip out your ocarina, play a Pona song, or something like that. Oh wait, you're not the person that you're <laughs> imitating this entire time. Like really, he just wants to play Ocarina of Time, but in a tabletop version. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Why not have a new adventure? That could be pretty fun. Uh, run from what's comfortable. Linkbeard suddenly got very excited. Uh, how many horses are there? What colors? Can we tame them? Hmm? Why would you want to tame a horse? Fast travel, of course. Uh, like, if we have to get somewhere quickly, we'll need someone with a horse to do so, wheezed Linkbeard. Ah oh, yes, our reliable messenger. <laughs> Linkbeard seems to be the lone wolf type, which makes me think that he's going to start, like, having some friction with Akira. Which is pretty interesting considering that Bourgeois Beard had some friction with a beardy rival in the story from yesterday. What's going on with all these beard battles lately? <laughs> from a strategic sense, it wasn't too bad of an idea, as Ori was a giant fucking rock person. And Nina, being a bird person, decided to hang back and gather some information in the stable. So the party that was trying to get a horse was two Hylians, Linkbeard and Akira, Azora, who was Ludo, and a Gerudo. That was me. Linkbeard scoffed. Uh, why would Azora need a horse anyways? <laughs> like, what's the point? And the Gerudo's too big to ride a horse. They'd probably break the horse's back and kill it. Oh yes, Linkbeard. We can't all pretend to be as slender as you <laughs> in-game. <laughs> uh, what the hell? And why did the two weirdos end up picking Hylians? That's just unfortunate. <laughs> I rolled my eyes. I might be a fat ass in real life, but I should also be able to ride a horse. And while Azora might need a special saddle, who cares? Besides, the more people attempting to get a horse, the better, right? We'll have higher odds of actually getting one, maybe two if we're lucky. Whatever. What color are the horses? <laughs> Focusing on the real important stuff. Dungeon Master rolled some dice and let us know that we saw some brown and... Black and blue, and even pink horses <laughs> with various spotted patterns. Linkbeard wrinkled his nose at that and seemed completely disinterested in finding a horse now. Eh, no point, grumbled Linkbeard as he scratched his weird puby beard. I'm going back to the stables. And so he did. What? What, what just happened? <laughs> He was so insistent until they didn't have the color that he wanted. Even if you're like buying a horse in real life, you don't buy it for the color. It's all about the, the personality. Same goes for anything really. Rat, dog, <laughs> cat. <laughs> don't pick it based on the color, that's stupid. Akira managed to get a black horse that he named something edgy. Probably Midnight, or Black Blood, or something equally edgy to match his edgy character. I would give him people names, like Paul, or Richard. <laughs> I think Ori suggested something like, Soul Taker, Keeper of Death and Dismay. I do remember that Nina suggested Ponyo, 
Yay, ham! Horses love ham. <laughs> so does Ponyo. It's ham! Careful, it's hot! Uh. Ludo, despite Linkbeard's scoffs, only just managed to tame a blue horse. Oh, that's matchy. That's real nice. <laughs> Now, after Linkbeard scoffed and said, uh, My character couldn't ride a horse, I decided to be a little petty and asked DM if I could find the strongest looking horse. He made me roll a D100 and he went through a table. After a few seconds, he describes the events that would set Linkbeard off this time. Okay, said DM. The horses you see around you probably wouldn't be able to hold your weight. From what you can see, you don't see a suitable horse. Linkbeard gets this shit-eating grin on his face like, He knew he was right. DM continues, Do you want to move deeper into the field? Yes. There's no point, said Linkbeard. Just leave it. Don't be a dick, Linkbeard, said DM. If Potato wants to look for a horse, she can, just like everyone else. I didn't get all bitchy when you decided that you didn't want to look for one. <laughs> whatever. And it's still a mystery to me why he decided that he didn't want to look for one. You could have a pink horse. You could name it Tom. Why do you not want this? <laughs> DM just rolled his eyes and talked about how my character went into a valley and found the horse. The horse that would cause Linkbeard to absolutely flip his shit. DM described a brown horse with a white mane and tail and feet. Now, to someone who isn't a Zelda fan, you might just assume that this is a regular horse. But it is not. Bro, <laughs> OP found a Pona. How did I know that this is where it was going? God damn it. Can we just have a nice little story that is only vaguely connected to the game's the horse is not a Pona, it just looks like a Pona. And I guess that's why uh, Linkbeard gave up, because that is the color of horse that he was looking for. Like I said, he, why don't you just go home and play Ocarina of Time? <laughs> There's no point to ruining everybody else's game with your Link roleplay. OP elucidates. You see, dear reader... In Legend of Zelda games, there are a few recurring characters besides Link that appear in several games. Impa, King Rome, Tingle, the weird ghost hand in the toilet, and then there is Epona. <laughs> the legendary horse that first appeared in Ocarina of Time. This horse is Link's horse, and Linkbeard, being, well, Linkbeard, absolutely flips his shit. Again. <laughs> hey, what the fuck, DM? He yelled. She can't have that horse. <laughs> oh, boy. I wonder if the Dungeon Master did this on purpose, just to see his reaction, or if this is all incidental. Because I probably would stir the pot. <laughs> Dude, chill, said Ori. It's just the horse. Calm down. Let her roll for it, if you want to live. <laughs> Everyone else quickly agreed with Ori, and effectively shamed Linkbeard into finally shutting the fuck up. And so, somehow, with a nat 20 on animal handling, I managed to tame that horse. Naturally, I'm a petty bitch, <laughs> and I named said horse Epona. Linkbeard was seething. Now, could I have been nicer to Linkbeard? Yes. Am I the kind of asshole that will also be petty? Yeah, also yes. <laughs> but to be fair, my petty attitude towards Linkbeard came from a mix between him freaking out for no reason twice now and the fact that he was mooching snacks off of everyone else again. Yeah, you got his number all right. The reasons might seem petty for now, but I'm sure they will only grow. So yeah, it, it pissed me off. Ludo and Akira were already back at the stables, and they registered their horses, locking in that their horses were theirs. It was then that Linkbeard tried to convince me to hand over my horse, like the dense motherfucker that he is. Hey, Potato, you should give me your horse. Why? 
I, I want to roll persuasion to make her hand over the horse. What? <laughs> you can't roll against another player. Are we going into PvP right now? Ugh, DM looked kind of annoyed, but for some reason, let it happen. Okay, but you're gonna have to roll with a disadvantage. Linkbeard looked extremely pissed, like he was going slightly pink with rage. <laughs> Why at a disadvantage? Because Potato was looking for a very specific horse. A horse that you yourself pointed out was fit for Gerudo. Potato knows that this horse is the best horse for her, and you would have to roll incredibly high in the open where everyone can see for her to even consider letting you take that horse. Linkbeard is pissed, but he rolled at a disadvantage. Well, to sum up, I kept the horse, registered it as mine at the stables, and Linkbeard was quietly pissed off for the rest of the session. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. Get a little blessed silence going on in here. <laughs> All you gotta do is make this guy really upset at the very beginning of the session, and he'll shut the hell up the entire time. Honestly, he's still not even that bad. I mean, <laughs> he's pulling some annoying moves, but I think we have yet to see the real beardery start to come out, you know? But yeah, at the time, I thought he was just a salty little bitch because he was a horse that looked like a poda. I later asked DM how I actually got that horse, and he let me know that I had about a 3% chance of actually getting it. So Linkbeard was pissy and moody, more moody than the actual edgelord character, <laughs> which both Akira and I found very amusing. The others played it off as Linkbeard being tired because of all the effort to get the horses, which he abandoned <laughs> before he even started. But okay, a fine narrative indeed. I can't remember why, but we ended up leaving the horses at the stables and walked to Kakarika Village as guided by Akira. This was his hometown, after all. We caught up with a few people, and before we could even meet the village chief, we were sent off on a side quest to take care of some monsters. Oh yeah, let's get some quality murder hoboing done today, ladies and gents. <laughs> I remember this quest pretty well, because it introduced a recurring joke villain. Melon Lord, the Bokoblin, hmm. A semi-powerful Bokoblin, who existed only to gather less powerful Bokoblins to steal melons. <laughs> he managed to run away before we could kill him, but the encounter was a success overall. It was one of the times that Linkbeard wasn't a complete asshole or tried to get the killing blow. I can only assume that he was getting a feel for the DM's slightly modified combat system. Joke villain, I absolutely love that idea. <laughs> I never DM, but I'm going to go ahead and put that into my non-existent notebook. <laughs> so we got to talk with the village elder, some old man. and <laughs> He's not just some old man, he's the village elder. Show some respect. <laughs> and we introduced ourselves, talked about some random stuff, and we eventually got the info that we needed. The old man was the great uncle to the Sheikah that was currently the personal bodyguard of the queen. We got the next plot point and a few side quests before the session ended. Everyone packed up and we were all heading out. That's when Linkbeard pulled me aside and talked to me. Hey, you need to give me that horse. <laughs> he wheezed. We're still on this. Okay, bro. OP says no. Why not? It's not like it affects your character or anything. He whined. That horse is perfect for my character arc. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me guess. You awaken seven sages and all this bullshit. It's boring. Go home. Play the character arc solo player all by yourself as much as you want because we're trying to have a new adventure here, you see. I, being a little sister and mastering both the act of bullshitting to get my way and seeing through said bullshit because my sister was just as big of a bullshitter as I was, this looked and sounded like, uh, complete bullshit. <laughs> yeah, what a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> Why, I asked. 
The only one that would kind of need a Pona would be Link. And there is no Link in this game, Linkbeard. Plus, if it's so crucial to your character arc, why not talk to Dungeon Master? Maybe my horse just has the color pattern. There could be a real Epona descendant somewhere out there. Yeah, but you called it Epona. I call the first mount in every game I play Epona, which is true. I even nicknamed my red Loftwing from Skyward Sword Flying Epona. <laughs> Flying Epona. Oh God, I usually name my mounts Richard. And then there's a joke about horse dick somewhere in there, but we're not gonna go there right now. <laughs> After I reprimanded Akira earlier on. Well, you shouldn't call it that. Are you telling me how to play my character? You don't have to be such a bitch. And you don't have to be such a dickless wiener face about not getting an imaginary horse. <laughs> Linkbeard looked fucking pissed. I probably shouldn't have called him a dickless wiener face. <laughs> I could have come up with a much more creative insult for his shitty attitude. Thankfully, it was about this time that the Dungeon Master came over and easily walked Linkbeard out the door. That's right, it's time for you to get the hell out of my house. Please don't steal any more bags of chips. <laughs> they stayed outside for a little bit before Dungeon Master came back in, shaking his head. <laughs> Potato, you're a jerk. Is this because I was mean to Linkbeard? Try to tone back the bitchiness. You know I love your energy, but Linkbeard's the kind of guy that hasn't been around women. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're gonna shovel this off onto the OP? I understand the DM wanting to bridge the gap, but this is not the way, my dude. <laughs> so he's a low-key misogynist? Yeah. Look. <laughs> uh, he just acknowledges it. Yeah, we're gonna keep him in the game still. Jesus. Look, I don't care if you clap back when he talks shit, but try not to start any shit, okay? Okay, on one condition. Mario Kart. And after that, Dungeon Master and I ended up playing Mario Kart and getting drunk. It was a night that I hardly remember. Homemade Lemoncello is damn strong. Isn't that the Danny DeVito liquor? But you made it at home? Oh, Danny DeVito would be proud. <laughs> I'm the trash man. I eat trash. <laughs> I'm the trash man. And then I start eating garbage. <sighs> I'll try and update sooner with the next part of this train wreck. Well, I'll be honest. I don't know if we're into full train wreck territory. There's just a little tinge of cringe, and that's okay with me, honestly. I think that mostly has to do with the fact that we're uh, just experiencing a tabletop horror story. So luckily it doesn't carry over into real life because that's where the truest, deepest, most horrible cringe happens. And uh, I don't like that none too much. <laughs> I mean, every once in a while it's okay, but sometimes I need a little mental health break and uh, stories like this. Yeah, it's nice. It's the reason that I love bowler beards so much. But of course, I will be looking forward to the further devolution of Linkbeard. Linkbeard was probably gonna <coughs> jump off to underage <coughs> or some crap. <laughs> oh god. FBI, open up! <laughs> the Legend of Linkbeard, Part 3. Possibly misogynistic? Yeah, maybe. That's one of the boxes that he has to check, isn't it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Hello, everyone! Hi, Tidy Harry Potato! <laughs> the Tidy Potato is back with the next part of this tale of absolute bullshit as we continue down the fucked up iceberg that is the legend of Linkbeard. That's right, first two episodes, that was just the tip. And you know, just the tip ain't never enough. You gotta go deep. <laughs> so uh, strap yourselves in and try to have some fun. Cast of characters remains the same as usual. Remember how I mentioned offhand that Linkbeard might have been a low-key misogynist right at the end of the last part? Well, this is where those tendencies start to shine through just a little bit more. Just a little bit, promise me a lot. 
I'm looking for that soul cringe. <laughs> Dish it up, baby. <laughs> I guess we'll see. The tale starts off a few days before the next session. Dungeon Master started using a group on Facebook Messenger so we could shoot each other messages and let each other know when games were on or if they were cancelled or if someone was going to be late. I ended up friending everyone there, except Linkbeard, and I am still friends with all the people that I friended to this very day. Anyways, much to my surprise, Nina asked me out to lunch, which I really didn't expect. Don't get me wrong, she's nice and everything, but we don't really talk too much outside of D&D. Well, that's the idea of the lunch break, isn't it? So you can kind of get to know each other a little bit more? Develop somewhat of a bond? A little bit of girl power going on? Makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> and OP said, but hey, she wanted to hang out. And I myself didn't have many female friends, so I thought, yeah, why the fuck not? <laughs> Indeed, girl power, like I said. Once again, the day is saved thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. So the two of us ended up going out to lunch together, and we did some female bonding stuff. Orange Mocha Frappuccinos! Orange Mocha Frappuccinos! <laughs> God, I'm making so many Zoolander references, I'm gonna have to watch that movie again <laughs> relatively soon. Which I found weird, honestly. I still hate shopping for clothes and shoes, but Nina wanted to do it. And we eventually got to go to an art shop, so I was happy at the end of the day. Apparently, Nina asked me to hang out for two reasons. One, to try and get ideas on what to get Ori for his birthday, her boyfriend for those that don't remember, and also to question me about Linkbeard. So, one pleasant conversation and one, uh, not-so-pleasant conversation. <laughs> but alright, take the good with the bad, I guess. As a side note, Nina and I got Ori some cool-looking ring from a place that was literally called Guy Stuff. Yeah, that's the place where you go for Guy Stuff. <laughs> uh, well, the name is not creative, but I can't say it's descriptive. I remember that because they have a lot of interesting stuff there, so yeah, free advertisement. If you're a guy, you need some stuff, go on down to guy stuff, not a sponsor. <laughs> Although, if they want to toss some money to me, I, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> so, Potato, what do you think of Linkbeard? Sugar-coated version or unfiltered? You can swear in front of me. You do it all the time at the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Nina. She seems like a sweet little bean. Fair. So, I told her exactly what I thought of Linkbeard, which, in hindsight, makes him look like a saint. I think he's a creepy-ass-looking basement dweller with a Zelda fetish. Probably the kind of fucker that would grope someone's ass on the bus, or believes that no means try harder. I have no fucking idea how or why Dungeon Master is friends with him, but... DM is just way too nice for his own good. I swear he would cuddle a Tasmanian devil and call it a precious bean as it consumed his goddamn face. Oh well, now we're coming after everybody. Just shotgun blast everybody in the group. <laughs> You're getting some pepper. Yeah, I got similar feelings, Nina said. Really? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Yeah, I think he was looking at my boobs last session, and it made me really uncomfortable. Thank you for sitting next to me and blocking him when we play. I just shrugged it off, because I'm usually the buffer between my small group of female friends and weird guys that want to date them. At least, when I have female friends, that is. No problem. Plus, Ori would probably beat the shit out of Linkbeard if he really did try something that made you uncomfortable. Oh, Ori wouldn't do that. Ori might look like he could beat your ass, and honestly, he probably could, but Ori's really a huge teddy bear. When it comes to things like spiders and bugs, I'm the one that takes care of them. Poor baby cries. Not Ori. I refuse to believe it. <laughs> He's still getting the Schwarzenegger voice. I don't care. To be fair, you get a shit ton of huntsman spiders around your area, right? I fucking hate those dinner plate sized fucks. Spiders are cute, though. I have a pet tarantula. 
they got some giant ass spiders in the Philippines, man. Like the size of both of your hands put together. And it's just like walking around on the walls, hanging out on the ceilings. I used to whack those fuckers with a broom, but my wife got really mad at me. <laughs> so now I uh, gently sweep them outside. Although, yeah, I haven't seen one in a couple of years, so maybe we killed them all. I mean, release them all into nature. <laughs> As we do. Definitely. Uh, and that, kids, is one of the reasons that I try not to judge people by their looks. I mean, Nina looks like the most super girly girl in the world, but she has a pet tarantula. I can't remember what kind, but his name is Romeo. Rip, little buddy. You eight-legged fucker. <laughs> yes, Romeo always dies at the end. I don't even know how long spiders live. I mean, they're just bugs, right? And then I get somebody in the comments that's like, Actually, it's an arachnid. <laughs> okay, you get my meaning though, right? So, back to the night of the game. Yes, please pull me off this tangent. <laughs> Once again, Linkbeard did not bring snacks to share. Shocker. I'm still very salty about this point and always will be. Ori and I ended up sitting on either side of Nina, which... Once again, annoyed Linkbeard. As it turned out, Linkbeard was still pretty salty over the whole pony thing, as I would come to find out. That's what happened in episode 2. Linkbeard missed out on a pona. How is he going to be the hero of time now? Ain't going to happen. <laughs> However, I did promise DM that I wouldn't deliberately provoke him, so it was kind of whatever. I wasn't going to make a big deal out of it. That doesn't mean that he wouldn't, right? <laughs> the game picked up from where it left off, and we went about getting info on where the queen and her baby were. Over the course of questioning and a combination of average to shitty roles on everyone's part, I somehow ended up being the de facto face of the group. I thought everyone was okay with that, and we ended up getting some good information. Everything became much more open world and we were given three possible locations as to where the queen might be. All right, OP's the leader. For the sake of brevity, we're just going to call her the hero of time. And Linkbeard starts crying in the corner. <laughs> You'll love to see it. After looking at our options, we decided it might be good to head south to Luralin. We figured that even if the queen wasn't there, we could probably find some cool stuff. <laughs> and isn't that what adventure is really all about? Also, Hatno Village was along the way, so we could probably find some cool stuff and pick up some side quests. Bro, that queen ain't never gonna get found. <laughs> I actually suggested it, which earned the table an annoyed groan from Linkbeard. What's up, Linkbeard? asked Dungeon Master. Uh, why do we have to do what Potato says? He asked. Roleplay it out, said DM. If your character has a problem with Potato's character, then talk about it in-game. And don't give me any bullshit like, Oh, it's what my character would do. As the DM, it's my character to suddenly summon the moon on your head and kill you instantly. Roleplay it out. DM fucking hates the, It's what my character would do excuse. If that's your only reason for doing something douchey, then DM has no problem with being just as douchey Right back to you. He wasn't a pushover when it came to his games. I don't know if I could sign off on being vindictive towards your players, but I do like the role play it out thing. You can't just say something and be like, yeah, that's what's happening now. No, show me. <laughs> show don't tell. That's rule number one in uh, something. Writing, I guess. <laughs> but you're basically writing a story just with your mouth. Anyways, <laughs> so reluctantly, on Linkbeard's part, we role-played out his grievances at the table. Oh, why did we have to do what Potato said without question? Asked Linkbeard. Why can't we go to Zora's Domain first? I want to go there first. <laughs> you make a strong argument, but no. <laughs> Ludo rolled his eyes at this. Because, Linkbeard, Lurlin's the closest place. It's also one of the most isolated parts of the kingdom, which means that Ganon's followers probably wouldn't suspect that she would go there, even if the queen isn't there. 
We might find a clue. Yeah, well, she didn't give us much of a choice, said Linkbeard. I don't know why the chief listened to her anyways. I mean, I'm a town guard. <laughs> I represent Hyrule more than some Gerudo. <laughs> oh, we drag a race into it. I mean, fantasy race, but still a little hinky. You don't gotta talk down about members of your party. Akira just shook his head at this. By that logic, the chief should have only listened to me. I'm from that village, and the Sheikh are extremely close to the royal family. Even closer than some random guard. Well, you're just a child, <laughs> grumbled Linkbeard. I, playing my character as a slight misandrist, because Gerudo women, living in a town full of women their entire lives, probably don't think super highly of men. So I just laughed at Linkbeard's character. Calm down, everyone. I was simply drawing on my experiences as a merchant to speak with eloquence and confidence towards someone of authority. However, if it means so much to you and your ego, I'll let you lead the charge next time, little man. Uh-oh, now the claws are coming out. <laughs> Here it comes. Who are you calling little? Growled Linkbeard. Dude, I'm literally seven feet tall. Gerudo are pretty tall compared to Hylians. Yeah, she's the tallest out of all of us, said Ori. Things eventually simmered down after that, and we ended up making it to Hotno Village, and we went about doing our own things. Oh, why do she get to do her own thing? <laughs> no, he didn't say that. I think I wanted to look for a better weapon or a shield. We did some more things in town and Linkbeard attempted really hard to try and get information on the Queen, which really didn't work because he was a dumb fuck and couldn't grasp that he was phrasing his question wrong. He kept asking villagers, Have you seen the Queen? Where's the Queen? Have you seen the Queen and her baby? And, <laughs> and varying questions of the same nature. Considering that they were in hiding and everyone thought that the Queen was still in Hyrule, he got fuck all, and ended up getting frustrated. I might as well if I was a player that cared about moving the story along, but I'm not, luckily. <laughs> I like hijinks. And a large part of that is probably because I could never figure out how to get that question right. What is the proper phrasing for that question? I'm sure the comments will help me out. Uh, this is bullshit, grumbled Linkbeard. We know the queen came through here. Why will anyone tell me anything? DM, this is bullshit. Roll play it out. <laughs> Maybe if you didn't ask stupid questions, then you'd get the right answer, I suggested, and got a glare from the DM. Oh, you just want to hog the spotlight, accused Linkbeard. You're always stealing the spotlight and trying to insert yourself into everything. Yeah, that's a bit of projection going on there from both of them. What is the proper question, OP? Please let me know. And Linkbeard, goddamn beyond saving, he truly does think that he's the hero of time. Like, <laughs> it's so frustrating to watch. Now, to be fair, as I said, I had become the face of the group. Out of our whole group, I was probably the most experienced at tabletop RPGs, and I feel like I was at home in Hyrule. I wasn't trying to take the spotlight, but I had a basic idea of what kinds of questions Dungeon Master probably wanted us to ask in order to get the story moving along. However, I always ask the opinion of other people, including Linkbeard. When it came to combat, I was a fighter. But Linkbeard was also a fighter, so I didn't really see how he could be pissed off at that. I just played the role of fighter, and did take a fair bit of damage, and tried to stop the squishier players from getting squashed in a fight until they got some better HP. And all of that sounds about right. Sometimes you do get thrust to the front of the group. And yes, that can change pretty quickly, but if you're trying to institute a mutiny within the group, then just whining like a little bitch is probably isn't the way to go about it. Ugh. I reminded him that I had said earlier in the session that I was going to take a step back and not take up the spotlight 
and give everyone some more time to shine during the roleplay parts of the game. Everyone else pretty much agreed with me, with Ori pointing out what I pointed out. That being that Linkbeard was asking stupid questions and getting stupid answers. Well, Linkbeard didn't like that, and pouted for the rest of the session, as he so often does. But what is the question? I don't understand. Maybe I'm just not smart enough. But whatever, leading the group is not my agenda. My agenda is strictly hijinks and shenanigans. <laughs> that quickly became a trend in our games. Linkbeard would either complain about some story aspect or something we did, we would talk about it and verbally fix the situation, Linkbeard would then complain about the thing that we had just fixed. <laughs> we would tell him that we had fixed it, and then Linkbeard would just be an insufferable little bitch for the rest of the session. Thank fuck it was usually in the last 20 minutes or so of the session. In hindsight, it was probably why he was allowed to be around for so long. Whatever, let him pout at his house like I give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go home, Linkbeard. I said that a hundred times in the last episode. So, the session ended and everyone was leaving. Akira was heading over to his sister's place to look after his niece and asked us if any of us had plans for the evening. I think Dungeon Master was going to play games while Ludo needed to go home and study or something. Linkbeard was probably going to jack off to underage hentai or some crap. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I mean, yeah, totally normal, non-jacking-off related activities. <laughs> For reals. And then Nina spoke up. Oh, Ori and I are going to go watch a movie at his place, she said. That seemed to set Linkbeard's sensors off. Eh, you two know each other outside of D&D? &D? Yeah, bitch, we just sat next to each other every single session. What are you talking about? What is their relationship dynamic? Is Ori just such a strong, silent type that he doesn't say a goddamn word to her? I guess the more likely explanation is that Linkbeard is just so socially inept that he doesn't pick up on even the largest clues. Ugh. Well, yeah. Ori and I have been dating for a few years. Why? <laughs> That's Linkbeard. He's a roided up Chad. Hey, you could do so much better. <laughs> like you? No, nah, no, nah, I'm going to pass on that. That's when the room went quiet. Keep in mind, Linkbeard said this in front of everyone. Ori was right next to Nina. He was picking up her bag while she was putting her shoes back on for crying out loud. Ori just kind of shook his head like he couldn't believe this shit, but also wasn't surprised by it. Dude. I'm standing right here. And I decided to be a little shit and once again provoke the neckbeard. That's my favorite game. <laughs> I hope to shame him into shutting the hell up because he was a cringy little asshole. What kind of dickless shit stain says something so disrespectful? Linkbeard, you don't know their lives. Telling someone you don't know that they could do better in their love lives is just one of the weaneriest wiener moves that a wiener could do. Why do you gotta be such a wiener? <laughs> Ask me about my wiener! She chose a, another word that starts with C, but you can't say that on YouTube. But also, yeah, OP, this ain't really your fight. Like, let Ori handle the thing. Hopefully with his fists. <laughs> That's what I'm really waiting for. Linkbeard went red, and it looked like he was going to yell at me, and that's when Ludo piped up. She's right. Only a loser would have the audacity to say something like that to someone that you hardly know. Yeah, I'm not a caveman, <laughs> said Ori. But it's pretty obvious that I could probably beat your ass if you tried to fight me. Walk away if you want to live. <laughs> Some more words were exchanged, and Linkbeard ended up cursing us out as he stormed out of the room. I thought that that was the last time that we were going to see Linkbeard. Unfortunately, later that week, Dungeon Master told me that Linkbeard had apologized to him for swearing in his house. Oh yes, the most chivalrous of chivalrous codes. <laughs> DM also told me that if Linkbeard apologized to both Ori and Nina, then he could keep playing. On a side note, 
He also asked me to stop saying wiener because it was making Ludo feel awkward. <laughs> Ludo just wasn't comfortable with too much swearing, apparently. So because of DM, the legend of Linkbeard continues. Part of me wants to be mad at DM for putting up with this, inviting this quite obvious beard back into the game, when all he's really trying to do is scheme on this chick that he doesn't really know. It's a bad look, but also I gotta be grateful to DM because the legend lives on. <laughs> the story gets to continue. Now this is some of the, the beardish behavior that I was talking about. It's not top level beard, although it does quite easily hit, uh, you know, medium high levels of beardery, but I'm looking for the, the full shebang a bang. Give it to me. <laughs> I think in the next episode from looking at the episode titles, uh, yeah, that's going to be the one. I'm proud of you, OP. Proud of you for being proud of your beard. Proud. Proud. The Legend of Link Beard, Part 4. The trans slash homophobic groper, allegedly. Uh, you can't objectively prove. <laughs> it all circles back to hipster beard, doesn't it? We did the M Saga a little bit yesterday, and for a 30-minute Saga compilation, it really does have just some golden stuff in there. Mwah! You can't prove that I groped them objectively. <laughs> if you missed that one, I hope you will go check it out. But, Linkbeard, that's what we're doing. So greetings, once again, everyone. It is I, Tiny Harry Potato. <laughs> this time, I'm gonna live up to my name. So, as mentioned in my first post, I have a hormone problem where I grow facial hair. Apparently, my body makes too much testosterone for a woman, but not enough for a man. It's like that deodorant, isn't it? Strong enough for a woman. Something like that. <laughs> it's a terrible joke. Oh, my body's fucking weird like that. All that to say that I can grow quite a scraggly beard that, if grown on a man, would indeed be considered a neck beard. I think I guess Picos back in episode one, but... Yeah, it could just be a general hormone imbalance. I ain't no doctor. I'm a neckbeard scientist, all right? <laughs> I shouldn't even be theorizing about this stuff. Because of this, my dad had taught me how to shave, since my facial hair tends to grow back and become noticeable after two to three days. I must say that I can grow a damn fine mustache and some mutton chops. Well, I think that's more than I could do. The mustache that I grow looks ugly as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it in the Navy because it's like the only facial hair you can grow. And I noped out of that plan in no time at all. So yes, good. Be proud of your beautiful mustache. I bring all this up because it's relevant to today's entry in the legend of Linkbeard. Also, warning, obviously, for transphobia and homophobia. So, after Linkbeard apologized to Ori and Nina for his neckbeard outburst, things were actually okay for a few sessions. It seemed like Linkbeard had learned his lesson and wasn't gonna be a little shit all the time. But if that was so, then I wouldn't have bothered writing out this story in the first place. Yeah, I guess. Sly spoilers there. <laughs> Neckbeards never learn. That's one of the traits. We should add that to the list. Sense of entitlement, delusions of grandeur, never learns their fucking lesson. <laughs> So after a few weeks of nothing bad happening, I happened to catch really, really bad gastroenteritis. Like, I was pretty much stuck to the toilet with a bucket in my lap for a few days. Yeah, that kind of sick. That is the worst kind of sick. Where did that come from? I've experienced it for, you know, maybe a day or two, but a few days, meaning three to five? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I would want to commit not alive anymore. But yes, all this to say that I was fucked up pretty bad, and I didn't maintain my usual shaving routine, so my facial hair was very visible by game day. At least by game day I was pretty much over feeling like shit, but I was pretty much on a strict diet of crackers and water until I was completely sure that I wasn't dead even if I still looked dead. 
Yeah, bunnies are kind of stupid. They're like, I'm sick, I can't put anything in here. It's like, please, I need to eat this so I can feel alive again. And your body's just like, nah. <laughs> Not yet. I told Dungeon Master that I looked like death, and I might have to go suddenly running off to the bathroom during the game, but in general, I was okay. It wasn't like I was handling food, and I wasn't puking anymore, so he was okay with me coming over to his place if I felt okay. Are you still contagious is the question that needs to be asked. I don't even know if gastroenteritis is contagious, but uh, I would err on the side of caution with that shit. <laughs> but yeah, if I needed the duck out early, he said he was cool with that as well. So I ended up rocking up to DM's place, looking like death slightly warmed up under the Aussie sun, with relatively visible facial hair and less of a fuck to give than usual. I mean, that's still more than zero, isn't it? <laughs> I still brought over a bag of chips for everyone because, you know, common courtesy. Which might not be as common as we would hope. The first thing Dungeon Master said to me was something like, Oh, bitch, you look fucked up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I shat out half of my body weight over the past three days. So, yeah, I feel like death. Try not to make me get too involved tonight, okay? Oh, no, nah, it's cool. Today's more of a chill session anyways. Nina, Ori, and Ludo are already here. So I went in and gave them the PG version of my shitty health as to explain my completely fucked up appearance. I also included my hormone issues since I usually shave my face before I come to the game as I felt like I had to explain why I was growing a beard. Eh, whatever, just let it happen. People should accept your beard and all, or don't. It doesn't really make a difference. I'll find a new group. But surprisingly, the only question that I got was from Ori. And he was asking why I was growing a ginger beard when I was a brunette. <laughs> I have no clue. I'm guessing uh, genetics, because my dad and my sister are both redheads. Anyway... We started talking about random stuff while waiting for Akira and Linkbeard to show up. They're probably making out in the parking lot. <laughs> Two edgy boys. <laughs> Grab the plug by the mail end and stick it in the hole. Just stick it in and don't play with it. And the conversation drifted towards relationships. Nina was gushing about this date that she and Ori had. Ori had been lucky and won a small amount of money in one of those $2 scratch lotto tickets. I think it was maybe 300 bucks, and he still talks about it being his luckiest day. But he spent most of that cash on taking Nina to the city for the weekend for a nice date. That's what everybody should do when they get an unexpected windfall of money, isn't it? Don't invest it, don't make it grow, just squander it! <laughs> squander it immediately! <laughs> uh. What I call them? Fun coupons! See that? A fun coupon! But I guess that's nice. Nina was gushing about going to the IMAX theater and the wildlife park. Oh, and the aquarium. I think they also went to the Chinese gardens. It was like a whole weekend affair. Ori, if you couldn't tell, is a bit of a romantic. Dungeon Master lamented that uh, he hadn't met a girl he wanted to date in a few years. Or a girl that wanted to date you. Hmm, <laughs> but I'm not going to dig too deep into that. The last time he dated someone was in high school. Ludo himself had only been on a few dates with some people, but nothing that serious came of it so far. I myself talked about my girlfriend. We had started to date a few months before I started playing in this campaign. Spoilers, years later we're still going strong. Babe, if you come across this and recognize this story, I love you. Uh, I love you too. Uh. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Don't make it weird. I'm glad you guys are happy at all. Put a number on it. Let's compare and contrast. It's always a competition around here. <laughs> it can't just be a happy relationship. You got to see who's been in a happy relationship the longest. You see, that's how you win. <laughs> It was around that time that Akira came in, asking why I look dead, and then joined the conversation. That was when Akira came out as gay to us. 
Not like he was hiding it from us, really. Like me, we don't forge our identity around our sexuality. They had been together for around a year at the time. Well, now I feel kind of bad about making a joke about him making out with Linkbeard in the parking lot. God damn. <laughs> uh, then Linkbeard showed up once again without snacks to share with the rest of the group. As soon as he saw me, he had the most disgusted look on his face. This is where the earlier warnings all come into play. Ew! What the fuck, Potato? Are you some kind of This is like your big coming out to us? Yeah, I had to bleep that. I don't bleep a lot of stuff on the channel, but those are two words that uh, you don't want to utter on YouTube. <laughs> They'll come down on you like a ton of bricks. But OP comes back with a good response. Are you jealous that your hormone therapy isn't working as well as mine? <laughs> I mean, I have this glorious facial hair and you have what are basically pubes super glued to your face, I said. Which of course annoyed the shit out of him. And he went red in the face. I'm proud of you, OP. Proud of you for being proud of your beard. Proud. Proud. I would also like to point out that we didn't immediately beat his ass and evict him from this planet because this was a slightly different time. Not super different from now, but me and my friends also weren't so PC. Also, my girlfriend and I jokingly called each other things like gay or frog or lesbo and other things like that. Plus, I was also sick and I wasn't firing on all cylinders. I think everyone else was just too shocked to say anything to Linkbeard. I mean, if this is how you talk to your significant other, I ain't really gonna get involved, but I will say that I don't do that. Your words have power, and if possible, you should be speaking positively about yourself and everybody around you. It might seem like a big funny haha -ha joke, but I don't know, I find levity in basically everything, uh, except that. <laughs> I don't really find much enjoyment at all in what's going on there, but like I said, your relationship, you do you. Trying to avoid a fight, Akira quickly interjected. Well, we were just talking about girlfriends and boyfriends. <laughs> Are you seeing anyone, Linkbeard? Nah, too many stuck-up bitches. I don't get it. Women just don't like nice guys these days. <laughs> oh no. All they want is some roided up bad boy that'll beat their ass. As Link said this, he kind of side-eyed Ori and Nina. Come on, Ori, call him out on it. Be like, you got something to say? Just say it, bro. We can handle it right now. And then he folds like a house of cards and everybody has a laugh. <laughs> now, I'm not sure how many people know this outside of Australia, but domestic violence is a very big problem around here. Like, one woman is fucking murdered every week by her partner because of it. I also later found out that Ori and Akira both grew up in homes with varying degrees of domestic violence coming from both parents, so that comment really pissed both of them off. I did not know that about Australia, but it is uh, interesting. I'd like to say that I won't make a joke about it, but uh, I can't promise anything. <laughs> when the opportunity arises, you have to seize it. I was just tired and thirsty, and Linkbeard's voice was grating on my ears. For fuck's sake, Linkbeard. Being nice isn't a personality trait. No one's gonna suck your dick if you open the door for him. Being nice is a fucking base level trait that every human should have. If you have nothing else to offer besides uh, being nice, then you can fuck right off. Ah, uh, what do you know, potato? Snarled the beard. You know nothing about women. Considering I'm in a lesbian relationship with my girlfriend, I would think that I know maybe a little something about women. Well, that just came right out of left field for the beard, didn't it? Your presumptions were shattered. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't presume things about people. And if you are assuming and end up blindsided, then take it in stride. <laughs> you don't like let your jaw drop and be like, oh, really? Like Linkbeard, who looked shocked. 
He couldn't believe that I, a fat hairy potato thing that looked like death, had a girlfriend, and he didn't. <laughs> I mean, what can I really say? We just kind of clicked, and plus, I know how to use soap. <laughs> Linkbeard was completely flabbergasted for the rest of the day, which was pretty much bliss for me and probably everybody else at the table. Just insult or shock him at the start of every game, and this session's gonna go smooth. <laughs> After that day's session, Nina, Ori, and Ludo had to leave pretty much immediately. Akira was staying to pick up something from DM. Linkbeard was still there for whatever weird-ass reason. He has nowhere to be. <laughs> Probably to talk to DM about something. I don't know. I was hanging around because I got my dad to drop me off, and he was going to pick me up because I felt like shit. Plus, my dad and the DM get along pretty well. Anyway, so while Akira and Dungeon Master went off to DM's room, they were going to do some crap with USBs or something. I was stuck in the lounge room with Linkbeard. Linkbeard kept giving me these really weird looks. I assumed that it might have been because my soul slash brain was starting to leak out of my ears or something. Uh, I don't get it, <laughs> said Linkbeard. I think there's a lot you don't get there, Beardo. <laughs> I imagine... <l> <laughs> it's the same joke, goddammit. I imagine the list of things that you don't get is very long, but maybe be more specific. That, grumbled Linkbeard. You're a rude bitch. You're also a fucking slob. Not feminine at all. Your fat rolls have fat rolls. And you have a beard. Seriously, are you a or something? In no way a real girl could grow facial hair like that. How the fuck could you get a girlfriend? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just the soap. We are identical, aside from the soap. <laughs> Put two and two together. Now, I am quite salty about this point, because as a woman who identifies as a woman, it does really hurt when people say things like that. Like I said, it's a hormone issue. I'm less sensitive about it now, but back then, it was an issue for me. And so, with Dungeon Master not there, I just decided, fuck it. I already felt like shit, so it was time to go for the jugular. Oh, shit, man. I mean, girl, I, I had no idea. Linkbeard was immediately confused, as I think all of us are <laughs> at that statement. He says, huh? Fuck, I mean, it all makes sense now. Don't worry. I'll keep your secret. What are you talking about, potato? Well, your beard looks worse than mine. <laughs> I said. So by your logic, you're trans, right? Because you have the shittiest beard out of the two of us? Fuck off with your bullshit. Secondly, despite my looks, I'm actually a good person to date. Linkbeard rolled his eyes. Yeah, sure. I bet your girlfriend isn't even real. Just something you angry feminazi made up to own us straight men. <laughs> Lesbians aren't even real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever you gotta tell yourself, I guess. <laughs> what the hell is that? Talking about a fake Canadian girlfriend. <laughs> uh, what a cope. I wish you could meet my girlfriend. My girlfriend lives in Canada. OP says... Oh, shit. I'm not real? Fuck, can I stop paying taxes? <laughs> I asked sarcastically. Look, Linkbeard, if you weren't such an absolute asshole, you might actually get a girlfriend. Failing that, I don't know, save up and go see a hooker. <laughs> Fuck you. You have no idea how to really please a woman. Yeah, a woman has no idea how to please a woman. I don't know about that, bro. <laughs> That's not solid logic at all. Boy, I actually know how to make a woman orgasm. Also, I got a 10-inch cock and I know how to use it. FYI, it was a rainbow horse dildo that one of my other friends got for me as a joke. And again, it's not really a joke. 
The suction cup on that thing is perfect for ripping out bathroom tiles. Mm. <laughs> bathroom renovations can be weird. Was it actually like a purposeful bathroom renovation? <laughs> I'm not sure I want to know about any of this shit. We go a little bit TMI now. Link me it looked like he was about to explode, which I assume was the point. I don't think OP was actually using this fucking thing. <laughs> when the door to Linkbeard's house opened, and my dad walked in. Now my dad kind of looks like a stereotypical Chad, but older. He had that jawline, quite muscular, and he's tall. My dad's pushing 60 these days, but he still goes for 10 kilometer, 6.2 mile walks a day. Thank you for putting that in burger measurements. And he goes to the gym five days a week. I visibly saw Linkbeard shrink in mild terror. <laughs> I was kind of surprised that dad just kind of walked in. Even if Dungeon Master is okay with him doing that when I'm here. Apparently he called me when he was outside, but I didn't answer. I had my phone on silent while I played D&D and just forgot to turn it back on, so that was my bad. Dungeon Master soon reappeared with Akira, and he talked to my dad for a bit before we left. So, on the way home, I learned some interesting foreshadowing. My dad used to be a transit officer for Sydney Trains before his job became redundant and he went to do some other stuff within the same company. That job mainly detailed handing out fines for people, not having tickets on trains, graffiti, making sure that really drunk people on the night shift didn't puke all over the train or fall off the platform, and to detain the really fucked up people for the police to come and pick up. God damn, having a real job must suck. I hope YouTube never falls through. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want to do any of that, dude, for eight hours a day. Come on. But Daddy is a, a figure of authority, so I guess we have to give him the Arnold voice, much like Ori. So, a potato! Yeah, Dad? How long have you known that Linkbeard guy? A little over a month or something? Why? Do you know where he lives? Or what school he went to? Why? He just reminds me of someone I saw at work a while ago. I don't know why. Maybe he was a little shit that snuck into the train yard to vandalize trains or something. I can't remember. At the time, I honestly wouldn't have been surprised if they did do something stupid like that. Linkbeard did indeed seem stupid enough to do it. It also might have made sense as to why Linkbeard shrunk away when he saw my dad. Ah, oh, the plot thickens. My dad can be really scary when he wants to be, and when he was a transit officer, he took the approach of scare the shit out of them kids and teenagers so they don't do stupid shit ever again. Yeah, I guess it works, but it's not as good as corporal punishment. <laughs> it wasn't until a few days later that my dad figured out where he remembered Linkbeard from, and also gave me a quick revision lesson on where to strike an individual to knock their ass to the ground and incapacitate them. Well, turns out a few years ago, when Linkbeard was a senior in high school, he groped a girl from his school on the train right in front of my dad when he was doing plain clothes, which is pretty much undercover stuff to catch people drawing on the train. Oh, what a twist. Well, Linkbeard just lost his one chance at redemption, we can all now hate him without worry of repercussion. Hooray! <laughs> I mean, not hooray, but you know what I'm saying. Dad didn't go into too much detail, but to cut a long story short, my dad detained Linkbeard and threw his ass off at the next station into the arms of a waiting police officer. The girl he groped was apparently 15 and was freaking out. My dad doesn't know if that girl pressed charges or what, but... Linkbeard at least got a fine out of that because he didn't have a train ticket. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jail time is required. That is sexual assault with a witness? Like, what else do you need? Ugh. At that time, I wasn't too sure what Linkbeard's age was at the time that all this happened, but with some basic maths, Linkbeard was either 17 or 18 when he groped a 15-year-old girl on a train. Bruh, I don't care if you're both 30. Don't, don't do this. Sexual assault, like, it does make it worse, but you think the age gap is the real linchpin in this fucking thing? No, it's trash either way. <sighs> so depending on if the girl pressed charges, 
Linkbeard might, in fact, be a registered sex offender, as he is. <laughs> That's the truth. And would you, dear reader, believe me when I say that this is not the worst thing that I discovered about Linkbeard by the end of this freaking saga? Oh god, it gets worse? Alright, we backing out. <laughs> Back the train out of the station. Nope. Jesus Christ. How could it possibly get worse? I don't don't answer that, please. Jesus, man. I, I I don't know if I'm ready. I thought it was just gonna be a happy little tabletop story and ha ha, he thinks he's Link or whatever, the hero of time. <laughs> but no, this is uh getting dark real fast. But continue it we shall. As I always say, OP was brave enough to write it. I'm brave enough to read it. Thank you guys for being brave enough to listen to it. Link beard. Uh, so, like, you draw her in those poses, uh, but with a lolly body. Uh. The Legend of Link Beard, Part 5. He attempted to commission me to draw lolly. Why? Why? Why would you do that ever in life? I mean, I guess to get your rocks off, but yeah, don't don't commission somebody that's in your direct social circle. No, I'm not giving tips. Never mind. <laughs> that's a terrible start. Okay. Hello again, Reddit. It is time once again to dive into the messed up story that is the legend of Linkbeard. So where we last left off, I find out that Linkbeard just might be a sex offender. Oh, goody gumdrops which is always fun to find out about. We had a similar story to this yesterday with Simpbeard. What is going on here? Uh, considering that Linkbeard clearly hates me, I wasn't really worried about my safety, but I was very worried about Nina. I mean, it's not really about like or hate. It's just a power fantasy, isn't it? So maybe he would be more likely. All I'm saying is keep your head on a swivel. Nothing good is going to happen while hanging around Linkbeard. I'm surprised that the DM hasn't completely kicked him out of the game. Also, I'm going a bit lighter on the cursing. You might find me mixing some words around just because YouTube has been on me lately for uh, saying too many naughty words in a row. So uh, we got to be pretty careful about that if I don't want to end up living in a cardboard box on the street. <laughs> Spare change. Spare change, ma'am. So yeah, the next time that I saw Dungeon Master, I told him about it, and he was pretty shocked and instantly conflicted. On one hand, we didn't really want to be associated with a sex offender, but on the other hand, this was kind of just hearsay from my dad, who vaguely remembered tossing him into the arms of a police officer. Neither of us really knew how to approach Linkbeard about this, on the slim chance that I was wrong, and that Linkbeard was in fact innocent. Yeah, I guess that's also a possibility as well. But considering we got the saga, I don't think that he's innocent. <laughs> so, against my better judgment, I just let it go. And so did the Dungeon Master. We both agreed to make sure that we kept a closer eye on him. Nina didn't like that much either, and did her best to try and avoid him anyways, so we weren't too worried about her. Plus, you know, she had Ori. And nothing will turn a gentle giant into full murder mode than an assault on his woman. But yeah, I'm kind of shocked that basically everybody in the group knows about it. And they're just kind of like, well, it might not be true. Well, let's let's clear the air. Okay, if you are innocent, then you, you shouldn't hesitate to talk about this thing that never happened, right? Hey, did you do this heinous, terrible thing? And he'd be like, nah, that ain't me. And then we could all move on, you know. To me, that just seems a lot simpler, but okay, we'll do it your way. <laughs> I asked the Dungeon Master why he even let Linkbeard join the game in the first place. Apparently, my dumbass friend felt that Linkbeard was just an introverted guy that needed some friends. Now, I myself am introverted, so I get where DM was coming from, kinda. Some introverts do get sad and lonely, even if they do like being alone, and everyone does like having friends, usually. Yeah, I'm fairly introverted myself, but I do need to cut loose once in a while, 
once in a blue moon, I'm just like, hey, let's go pretend to be an extrovert for a night. And then once it passes, I'm like, God, I'm not doing that again until next year. <laughs> also, a bit of backstory. As it was mentioned, the Dungeon Master was enabling Linkbeard, which, yeah, he was. Back in high school, Dungeon Master was a pimply little shit with kind of crappy hygiene, as most teenage boys who don't seem to realize how bad they smell when they are teens. Yeah, I think I'm guilty of that one. <laughs> Dungeon Master started to fall into the realm of being a neckbeard and started to call the girls in school b and ho- Thank God we had a diverse group of friends, both in gender and race. After a real heart-to-heart -heart talk with him about how he needs to remove that sexist stick from up his ass, and also a basic talk on hygiene from some of the other girls, Dungeon Master slowly crawled out of the devastating hole of neckbeards that he had started to fall into. Yes, another one saved. Good job, OP. That could have gotten real dark. But uh, he definitely does have some beardish tendencies as well to shake out, as I guess we all do, but some are more toxic than others. As a result of all this, Dungeon Master has a bit of a savior complex, and he tries to save beards from their bullshit, which is nice, but truly, some of them really are just crappy people. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? You can't save somebody from themselves. First, you need to have that spark of self-awareness, and then I'll be like, okay, maybe you're savable. But yeah, I'm not just gonna go all in on some rando, pick them over my entire friend group. Nah, nah. <laughs> it can't be like that. So yeah, DM is the kind of guy that will try and save a beard from themselves, because they themselves were very close to becoming a beard. Possibly close to falling into... <gasps> Incel dumb. <laughs> Which we also talked a lot about in the, the simp beard video yesterday. To be honest, if Dungeon Master did fall into that, I'd probably attempt to save him from that for about a week before completely giving up because, yeah, fuck that mess. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. You gotta think of your own sanity. Anyways... With that bit of background out of the way, I ended up going to DM's house early that day because earlier in the week I had mentioned to Dungeon Master that I had drawn a few pictures of his NPCs and my own character and he wanted to see them, which was kind of nice. I usually draw more gory and graphic kinds of things, think Bloodborne monsters, but for this I chose a cuter, chibi kind of style. Dungeon Master really liked it, and kinda commissioned me to do a few other drawings of some other NPCs in that same chibi style. He even asked if I could do a group drawing of all the PC characters, which I was happy to do because I was gonna do it anyways. <laughs> yeah, but now you're getting paid for it, hell yeah. What a good deal. That's nice of the Dungeon Master too. I still need to commission somebody to uh, draw out the portrait that we had made during our D&D sessions in the Discord server. But I don't know, man. I'll hop on Fiverr sooner or later, I guess. <laughs> so DM and I compared sketches for a while. Dungeon Master is really good at landscapes, but he's kind of shit at drawing people. <laughs> I'm the opposite, but we are both improving. So we're just comparing drawings as people began arriving. It's nice everybody's got different talents, you know? You can mash those two things together, guess what? Perfect artist! I can't draw basically anything to save my life, so... <laughs> I would love to have one or the other. Unfortunately, it, it is not to be. I guess maybe if I practice. But it was time for all that, right? <laughs> Anyways, we were a semi-creative group. And it was kind of fun to look through each other's pictures. We ended up talking about video games and movies until Linkbeard showed up. Once again, he showed up with no snacks. <laughs> uh, he bought snacks, he just ate them in the car. <laughs> the sketchbooks got passed around and Linkbeard ended up looking at our books. Wow, Dungeon Master. You really like drawing horror stuff, said Linkbeard. Actually, that's Potato's sketchbook. Mine is the one with the landscapes, clarified DM. Oh, I'm not good at drawing people. Uh, but girls shouldn't be drawing this kind of stuff. 
<laughs> said Link Beard. Oh boy, here we go. I rolled my eyes. So what? I should be drawing like princesses and flowers and that kind of crap. I draw what I like, and I like gore. <laughs> hey, she knows what she likes. Gotta give her points on that. <laughs> Well, you shouldn't be drawing that kind of stuff. It's unbecoming of a lady. Ah, oh, yes, Linkbeard, the arbiter of virtue and good taste. <laughs> wow, four syllables, unbecoming. Yeah, I guess that checks out. That hamster in your head needs a rest. Poor thing's working overtime. Yes, I am a sarcastic bitch. That's a trait that my dad said I got from my mom. Well, I like her drawings, said Nina. Reminds me a bit of Dead Space. Linkbeard looked shocked. Y you you like Dead Space? <laughs> That's not the type of game a lady should be watching. You gotta go watch My Little Pony. I gotta wonder what's going on in his head. How does a world like his work? <laughs> Yeah, I kind of suck at those games, but it's fun watching Ori play them. After that, the session went alright, and there wasn't really much in the way of a horror story there, but the horror story came later that night. You betcha. Brace yourself for this one. <laughs> I don't remember if I mentioned this, but Dungeon Master had set up a group for us on Facebook so we could let everyone know if we were able to make it to the sessions or if we were going to be late, stuff like that. I think that was mentioned. So here I was, late at night, eating some ramen and trying to watch some anime or maybe gameplay footage from some YouTuber that I liked back then. And I had my Facebook open for whatever reason, as you do, and I got a PM from Linkbeard, which was kind of weird. <laughs> but whatever, I guess. Linkbeard said, Hey, potato. OP, what's up, Linkbeard? Linkbeard. And so, I was looking through your sketchbook, and I noticed that you drew really cute chibi girls. <laughs> OP. Yeah, it's not usually my style, but I like to try different things every now and then. Linkbeard. <sighs> Very true. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. I don't like where this is going. FBI should be knocking on this door any minute now. So... I was wondering if you could maybe draw me something. OP? Like what? Linkbeard? Uh, Princess Zelda in her Breath of the Wild white dress would be <laughs> really cute. OP? Yeah, she is pretty in that dress. Linkbeard? Yeah, so if I send you some reference pictures, uh, could you draw something? OP? 15 bucks for a pencil sketch, 20 for an ink and colored in pencil, and 30 bucks for a digital drawing. I also reserve the right to not do said commission until I'm fully paid. Man, those prices are pretty reasonable. Let me holla at you, OP. <laughs> God damn. Is that just for chibi? Or you gonna do anything in that style? I got some ideas. Let me get at you, for real. DM me. User dating does. Thank you so much. <laughs> if you're interested in the work. If Linkbeard was going to try and commission me for a drawing, I damn well was going to make him pay for it. <laughs> I'm not stupid. I don't do commissions, but I have paid for a few, so I have a basic idea of how much they usually are. Also, I was hoping to just price gouge the beard a little bit so he would leave me alone. Because really, I did not want to do anything for him. I wanted as little to do with him as possible. Linkbeard... Uh, what? Why so expensive? That's way too much. Bro, you cheap as hell. <laughs> $30 for a quality custom-made drawing? <laughs> what are you smoking? That's not too much. Pony up. Oh, I'm sorry to say pony up. I didn't mean to bring up memories of a pona. That's sad. <laughs> How are you going to be the hero of time now if you broke? Go ahead and break some pots and, you know, collect some rupees or whatever. All right, I'm going off on a tangent. Potato says, all right, then you draw it, Linkbeard. What? OP, you draw your own fucking chibi picture of Zelda instead of bothering me, Linkbeard. 
<sighs> Fine. Twenty dollar commission. Can you draw a chibi Zelda looking like this? Now, I was shocked that Linkbeard was actually going to commission me in the first place. And before I could even say anything, he sent me some hentai. <laughs> now, to be fair, it wasn't full-blown tits and vag out. It was more kind of ecky. Fan service. So, like, lewd, but not overly sexual. Yeah, but in a chibi style? <laughs> Come on, dude. I don't like that one little bit. I knew who this character was because I myself am a bit of a degenerate weeb. <laughs> You're in good company. I was fucking shocked because mixed in with the suggestive and sexy poses of this freaking hentai character were dozens, and I mean dozens, of little anime girls. Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> my soul cringe. <laughs> it's left my body now. Uh, think Rika from Higurashi or Kanakamui from Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. I was really horrified at what Linkbeard wanted me to draw. Yeah, I'm not selling my soul for 20 bucks. Sorry about that, <laughs> Linkbeard. Uh, so, like, you draw her in those poses, uh, but with a lolly body. Uh. God damn it, dude. He is the most horrible kind of human being. We started out so slow, and this has just ramped up considerably. OP, look, I'm going to be real clear with you. There is a huge difference between chibi and lolly. Chibi is a cute style of drawing that exaggerates the head and eyes, things like that. Lollycon is a gateway to illicit underage activities, just like Shotokan, and it is fucking disgusting. Look, I really don't give a crap if the character's fictional, because I find it disgusting to depict any underage character in sexual situations. It's gross, it's messed up, and I fucking hate it. Nobody can blame you for that. We don't even allow it on the Discord server. We got a dark channel on the Discord server where I'll let you post whatever you want, but not that. Unacceptable, you will be removed. And that's how we get rid of people like Linkbeard, who freaks out at this and says, yeah, Lolly Khan is not P. Dolphin Philia. <laughs> And Q Linkbeard just screaming at me over Facebook Messenger that Lycon's that disgusting, and it was fine because they weren't real, and she's a 10,000 year old dragon anyway. <laughs> you know, all the same excuses that most of these creeps say. Oh my god, it was just so annoying. I screenshot those messages for later. Stuff like blackmail material, and you know, if ASIO, which is Australia's version of the FBI, needs this in the future, I like to keep my options open. I don't even think screenshots are necessary. Facebook is tracking all of what was said just now. They can requisition these chat logs, but yeah, I guess it's good if OP, like, points them in the right direction. Oh, you looking for some incriminating evidence? Well, I just happen to have handy. <laughs> Potato, look, Linkbeard, I don't like you. You don't like me, so why the hell would I draw something that looks like fucking CP, Linkbeard? Uh, she wouldn't even be naked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, all this is just going over your head. OP, that's not the point. I'm like 90% sure that drawing this stuff counts as CP, and I sure as hell do not like you enough to draw that kind of depraved shit and potentially go to prison just because you want to wank off to an underage blonde girl. Fuck you. Never message me anything like this ever again. In fact, never message me again at all. If you reply with anything but a sad face emoji, I will literally punch you in the goddamn face and break your nose when I next see you, and I will show everyone what you just showed me. Linkbeard, sad face emoji. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, he complied, and I love it. And that was the last message that I ever got from Linkbeard. Anyway, I sent the Dungeon Master the messages that Linkbeard showed me and told him to kick his ass out of the group. He was a creep, and I was going to kill that bastard if he did any more of that gross, lewd shit around me ever again. Dungeon Master thought about what I said, and what he said next made me legitimately want to kick him right in the balls. DM, oh no, I'm still gonna let him play. Bro, now there's no saving Dungeon Master, birds of a feather, alright? You will find no solace, no forgiveness from me, should something bad happen, DM. OP, excuse me? Are you stupid? What the actual hell is wrong with you? DM, look, I know this is gonna sound really messed up, but trust me, I have an idea. OP, unless that plan involves beating him to death with a dictionary, I really don't care. DM, listen, Linkbeard has sent me some questionable stuff too. Even more questionable than the stuff that he sent you. I'm just digging a little deeper to see how far down this rabbit hole goes. Until then, just please be patient. But yeah, if he tries to get you to draw that lolly crap again, kick his ass. <laughs> just kick his ass anyways. Why do we need an excuse at this point? OP, I'll kick his ass so hard that he'll start coughing up his spine like a Pez dispenser. <laughs> I really like that image. This funny. At the time, I could only assume that Linkbeard had sent more explicit hentai or probably just straight up porn to DM because DM is a man while I'm just some lowly woman. Which in this case was kind of a good thing because I'm not a fan of porno, but yeah, I was still pissed that DM wasn't letting me in on whatever his little plan was at the time. Unfortunately, I wouldn't know about what Linkbeard had sent DM and what cunning little plan he was cooking up until it all unfolded. Until then, there are several more entries in the legend of Linkbeard to slog through. I still have no goddamn clue why he wanted me to draw the gross Zelda lolly hentai crap. This was literally a week after the last time that Linkbeard and I had a verbal fight. Which was the last part where Linkbeard happened to see my dad, and my dad told me that Linkbeard is a molester. Allegedly. <laughs> you gotta add allegedly in there. That, that keeps it legal. Can't sue you for slander or whatnot. So yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed it, and I will try and upload the next part soon. I don't think enjoy is the word. This really made my skin crawl. I, I don't like it none too much. <laughs> <laughs> this story is getting deeper and darker, and I fear what could possibly happen next. Hopefully there is a big comeuppance. I would really like to see this guy get exactly what is coming to him. Not just ostracized from a game group, but ostracized from society as a whole. Congratulations, you're a pariah. You live on this deserted island, and hopefully you'll, you'll starve to death there, and nobody will miss you. And probably there will be some people uh, in the comments that are like, Calm down, it's just a drawing. Well, guess what, bro? <laughs> you just outed yourself as a creep, alright? Ain't no way anybody's getting a pass with any of this crap. Oh, God. Linkbeard. I thought it was just going to be such a nice little story, and it is so not. You don't know anything about dragon style, or monkey style, or drunken style. I know this. Pocket sand! Cha-cha-cha-cha! Pocket sand! <laughs> the Legend of Linkbeard, Part 6. Neckbeard style versus karma. Bro, karma's gonna win every time, I tell you that. <laughs> Even if you're not going neckbeard style, karma is, uh, yeah, that's hefty. And uh, also, welcome back, user Tiny Hairy Potato. Glad to see ya. <laughs> so, there are a few more stories about Linkbeard before the crap really hit the fan for him and he was out of all of our lives forever. Well, at least there's a happy ending, I suppose. <laughs> This is a more light-hearted tale of Linkbeard just being a complete and utter idiot, and also how Karma ended up kicking him right in the ass. Oh, that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? 
That's exactly what I was hoping for today. After powering through Unfortunate Nookie yesterday, I'm like, please, please, <laughs> just give me a little break. My mental sanity needs it. Uh, Ori's aunt runs a karate studio, and he sometimes helps her out from time to time when her own children can't. In other words, Ori is pretty much a punching bag for his little 50-plus-year-old auntie. Yeah, it doesn't seem too bad, I guess. Is he getting paid for this? <laughs> if you're gonna punch me, you gotta pay. At least that's my outlook on the situation. If you're family, you still gotta pay. <laughs> I won't let strangers punch me for money, but, but family, yeah. You can punch me, but for money. Have I made that clear enough? <laughs> <laughs> Nina has actually shown me a video of the aunt throwing Ori over her shoulder like it's nothing when he comes at her with a plastic prop knife. <laughs> Is this like legit karate? It'd be a lot funnier if he's standing in on like a women's self-defense class. That's my purse! I don't know you! <laughs> so sometimes Ori will have some karate equipment in the back of his truck and if he gets to DM's place early enough, he'll show us all the punching bags and paddle things and the breaking boards. These are reusable plastic boards of different colors. The colors denote how strong they are and how difficult it is to break them. How are they reusable? That's amazing. I gotta do some homework on that just for my own curiosity. <laughs> I used to do Taekwondo and I remember breaking these when I was but a small child with my yellow belt. Oh, my daughter's got a yellow belt in Taekwondo now. She's doing so great. She loves kicking those little paddle things. So does my four-year-old, but he rack a discipline. <laughs> Important to note for later, I had to look it up and double-check with Ori, that there were seven boards, with the weakest to the strongest being white, yellow, orange, green, blue, brown, and black. Remember that. Isn't that the order of the belts or something like that? That might make it a little easier to remember, but I don't remember an orange belt, <laughs> honestly. So, yeah, I'll just try and remember that. I'm not going to remember that. <laughs> DM and Ori were out in the backyard practicing breaking the orange board. They were taking turns holding it and then punching or kicking it. Ori explained what the boards were and asked if I wanted to have a go. So we all went around breaking the boards, and by the time everyone else showed up, we were just messing around with the green and blue boards. I mean, it sounds like a pretty chill time. <laughs> hey, how about we forget about D&D &D today? Let's just play Karate Man. <laughs> or, you know, Karate Lady, if that's your preference. <laughs> Eventually, someone asked Ori what color board he was able to break with a single punch. And, of course, everything went downhill from there for Linkbeard, of course. Oh good, he's gonna embarrass himself. <laughs> I hope he fractures his hand. After all we know about him, I have no sympathy left for him. I can punch through the brown board pretty easily. It takes a fair bit of effort to break the black board. Nina pretended to swoon. Oh, my hero. So strong, good sir. Anything for you, my lady. <laughs> <laughs> Ori said in a joking manner, and even pretended to tip an invisible fedora that might have topped his head. I can only assume that this was some kind of challenge to Linkbeard's manliness or something. I don't know. I'm not a neckbeard. I am a neckbeard scientist, and this is definitely fighting uh, actions. <laughs> If you tip to a milady that another neckbeard has his eye on, it's time to do 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 duel. It's time to do 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 You haven't done much training in the way of true martial arts. <laughs> Gurgled Linkbeard. I have spent many years training my body to be a weapon of lethal force. <laughs> God. Uh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the. F uh, yeah, I guess your smell is pretty forceful, isn't it? Dude is 100% living in La La Land. Yeah, prove it. Let's see this this lethal force of yours. <laughs> I just rolled my eyes. Neat. What fighting style did you study? 
karate, taekwondo, jiu-jitsu, judo, muay thai, kung fu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, krav maga? What? Yeah, you wouldn't understand the ways of a real warrior. <laughs> nice cop out. DM just shook his head at that. Linkbeard, Potato used to do Taekwondo with me in primary school. She stayed on longer than I did. Her roundhouse kicks were legendary among us white belts. Yeah, I know I sound like I'm bragging a bit about myself, but whatever. I'm a weirdo of many interests and did many weird things growing up. I didn't really stick to one sport for more than two to three years. Thank God my parents were okay with that. Anyway, the point is I can still kick like a donkey. Punching, not so much, but I can block though. I don't think it sounds too much like bragging, like, okay, you outdid a bunch of white belts. It's not like you're comparing yourself to the black belt or the sensei in the dojo. This is just like a little bit of exposition for what I'm sure happens next. <laughs> and I have some ideas. Uh, oh, really? What belt did you get up to? Asked Linkbeard. Yellow belt, green stripe, so like seventh gup? I think it was Dosan, I answered. When I was doing Taekwondo, I found out as much as I could about it, and it was pretty easy for Little Potato to find out about belts. Yeah, Google. <laughs> I don't know if Google existed when, when Potato was growing up, but nowadays, the answer to everything is one internet search away, and it's beautiful. <laughs> and that's okay, I guess, for a girl. <laughs> oh god, he pulled that one out. I've heard that's like fifth grade or something. It's like that scene from the Sandlot. You throw like a girl. You play ball like a girl. Anybody remember the Sandlot? No, just me. All right. <laughs> you don't know anything about dragon style or monkey style or drunken style. I know this. Pocket sand. Cha 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 cha. Pocket sand. Wouldn't it be hilarious if OP really did pull out some pocket sand? Or like some powdered glass and blow it in his eyes? <laughs> no more looking at lollies for you! <laughs> uh, isn't Jackie Chan a master of that drunken style? Asked Nina. Oh, so well educated, my lady. Uh, said Linkbeard. <laughs> Dungeon Master just kind of rolled his eyes and picked up the brown board. Yeah, whatever. Ori, break this board. <laughs> Ori just kind of shrugged and then punched right through the board. When Dungeon Master snapped it back together, he got me to kick through it. I did more of a roundhouse kick and ended up with a bruise on my shin for my troubles, but I did it. While we did that, Ludo and Akira were being dorks and headbutting the white and yellow boards apart. <laughs> Linkbeard himself seemed to be glaring at me, Ori, and Dungeon Master. You better watch out, OP. I bet Linkbeard's been out there kicking coconut trees like those kickboxers from Thailand. He's gonna just smash through the blackboard and show everybody up right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you guys are doing it all wrong. Uh, here, let me show you, complained Linkbeard. Now, one of two scenarios came to my mind. Either Linkbeard would completely stun us and show off that he truly was a master of the martial arts and shock us all with his mastery. His brilliance would make us all bow down and worship the ground that he walked on. Or, more likely, he would fuck up so badly that someone might need to drive him to the ER. <laughs> I know where I've got my money. This is a sure bet. <laughs> so Linkbeard pulled his little man fist back. <laughs> his little man fist back, ready to strike at the board. He looked like he was trying to psych himself up, ready to go all Super Saiyan on this plastic board. Oh, I hope he injures himself. <laughs> He firmly planted his feet into the ground, pulled his fist back, and punched the board with all of his neckbeard might. Crack. Pop. <laughs> Linkbeard curled in on himself as he punched the hell out of the still complete board. The board wasn't even bent at all. <laughs>
<sighs> I hope he broke his hand. As it turns out, neckbeard style isn't very effective as a fighting style. I went inside to get an ice pack. Well, that was nice of ya. When I came back out, Linkbeard was still holding his fingers, red-faced, with tears running down his cheeks. <laughs> Good. Do it again. Second try. <laughs> Can you make a fist? All right. Don't be a baby man. Punch it again. <laughs> oh. Ludo took the ice pack from me and helped Linkbeard to apply it. After that, Ori put the boards away. <laughs> And we waited around to see if Linkbeard needed a drive to the hospital to fix his mangled hand. Thankfully for Linkbeard, I guess, he was okay. He didn't seem like he had broken his fingers or anything, just a really bruised ego. As all that was happening, Nina and I went inside to get some drinks and ended up talking. Linkbeard is such a weirdo, <laughs> said Nina. Like, I'm pretty sure he's trying to woo me or something. Really? What was your first clue? <laughs> uh, really, Ori should have just pummeled this dude and gotten it over with. I'm still hopeful that there's going to be a, a a beard fight. We've had a few of them, and I'd love to add Linkbeard to the list. <laughs> I just shrugged as I tried to find a cream soda in the fridge. One of my favorite drinks. That is a classic. I haven't had that in years. And DM said I could take one. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, you're very beautiful, Nina. You've been hit on by other guys while with Ori before, right? Well, yeah, but not to this weird extent. At least Linkbeard isn't the acting dungeon master in this game. He'd probably do something really creepy and stupid, like making all Gerudo sex fiends that only want to bang Hylian men in order to get knocked up, or, you know, describe them as having stupidly huge tits. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, I thought Nina was playing Arito. I don't think that <laughs> he'd go after Gerudo's because that's what uh, Potato was playing as, and he's basically established that he has no interest in ROP. But I don't know. I guess Beards is going to be Beards. They'll make it awkward one way or the other. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be really dumb. Have you talked to Dungeon Master or Ori about Linkbeard being a creep? Nina said, yeah, I showed Ori some of the DMs that he sent me. Now, that piqued my interest. After the lolly bullshit he tried to get me to draw for him, someone that he doesn't like, how would he treat the lady of the group? Would he ask for some tit pics? Pics of her vag? Feet pics? Maybe he would ask her to wear some Legend of Zelda stuff and ask him to save her from Ganon. <laughs> oh, no. The possibilities truly were endless. When cosplay goes too far. <laughs> oh shit, damn, you looking real cute. What's your name? My name is Felix. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> I'm killing myself. Nope, never gonna happen. What was that one beard that's trying to get the girl to go to a convention with him dressed like Zelda? I think it's Kaiju Beard. I'm really surprised that Link Beard didn't end up playing that card. Or maybe he was just waiting for the window. That would never open. <laughs> OP says, yeah? What the hell did he want? Nina said, awkwardly asking me to hang out at his house. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I only know him through D&D. &D, and even then, he's been looking at me like a priest looks at an altar boy. <laughs> God, we're going to have to transfer him to a different sect or something. <laughs> We both laughed at the tasteless joke, as did I, I suppose. <laughs> and we went to see if we were actually going to play some D&D &D tonight, or if we were just going to throw Linkbeard out to the ER and then do some other nerd stuff that night. Linkbeard, still clearly in pain, said, He was fine. And so, we played. Are you sure? Are you sure you're fine? There's no shame in getting the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> just rub it in his face. Be like, you look like you've been crying, bro. Are you okay? Are you still crying? Are you okay? I'm, I'm truly concerned. <laughs> the game wasn't too crazy. Linkbeard was a lot shorter and more aggressive in the session, especially towards Ori that night. Clearly, he was blaming Ori for messing up his hand, which was dumb. Stupid bastard had punched the board himself, after all. <laughs> so, yeah... The session wrapped up for the evening, and everyone went on home. Then, 
later that night, I got a message from Dungeon Master DM. So, you know how Linkbeard hurt his hand? Yeah, he has a partial fracture in his middle and pointer finger. <laughs> Lamal. Some kind of cosmic karma or just bad luck. You decide. Now I feel kind of bad that I wished it on him because it actually happened. I could kill anybody just by thinking about it. <laughs> I, I don't know the extent of my own powers, I suppose. <laughs> God damn, dude. He's sitting there with a broken hand trying to play D&D. That can't be easy. And it probably was his dominant hand since that's the one he's more confident with. God, that is beautiful. <laughs> I love everything about that. Jesus, dude. This is definitely a case of cosmic karma and overconfidence, which led to bad form. And he just totally slammed his fist against this board, which uh, it sounds tougher than it looks. You would think that a reusable board that just snaps back into place, how hard could it be? <laughs> Harder than one would expect. Much like Linkbeard's head, as we're finding out. God damn, I hope for the rest of the series his hand is broken. He gets kicked out of the games while his hand is still broken. Add a little bit of injury to that insult, you know what I'm saying? Eventually we found the most evil Bokoblin and the bane of our existence, Melon Lord. <laughs> yes, I love Melon Lord. I am The Legend of Linkbeard, Part 7. Forgetful or a wiener move? We can't say that word quite yet in the video. <laughs> so, you know what I'm talking about. Starts with a D. Hello, everyone. So, Red X decided to pick up this saga. Hell yeah, I did. 22 days ago? God, time is flying by, I'm gonna tell you that. <laughs> and I would like to thank you. And I would like to thank you right back, Tiny Hairy Potato. This was mostly to vent to entertain the masses because, yeah, I do like telling stories. Oh my god, we are so the same. We should be like best friends forever or something. It's the best friends forever! Best friends forever! Ring! <laughs> also, my whole inner circle knows this story front to back and is, uh, kind of sick of hearing me talk about it, so I'm glad to know that some other people are able to find some entertainment in all of this. The next part of the saga picks up during the game. Oh, hooray! A little bit more RPG horror stories. I really like that tabletop stuff. You know, it's cringy, it gives me bad vibes sometimes, but it's relatively harmless compared to some of the heavier things that we've dealt with on the channel, so maybe it will be like a little reprieve after all. Who can say yet? We had all made pretty good progress with our own character storylines. Nina had made good headway in documenting all the things she came across, and collected lots of plants, and made sketches of animals. Ludo was looking for ancient artifacts for his sage master guy, for some reason that was never established. Ori had made notes on interesting gemstone and rock deposits. Akira had grown as a character and was opening up more to us. He was less of a lone wolf, and started to see Nina as a big sister, and they had kind of a fun sibling dynamic going on. I established more trade route for the Gerudos to do, uh, you know, trading stuff. <laughs> yes, it sounds like some good character development is happening. Oh, but who's missing from this, uh, <laughs> list of characters that have been developing? Oh uh, yes, Linkbeard. He still wants to be the hero of time. Is that character development? <laughs> Not really. And then yes, there was Linkbeard. He hadn't really grown as a character in game at all. Or as a person in real life at all, for that matter. <laughs> well no, that was a lie actually. He became a broody lone wolf that actively tried to derail side quests because he just wanted to find the queen and Zelda. He was also trying to find the Master Sword. Yeah, that sounds like winning. Every other member of the party's like, hey, let's go do this thing. And he's like, ah, can't we just go do the main quest and beat the game? Try to explain it to him like, you know, you need to go collect more heart containers or you'll never defeat Ganondorf so Zelda can be free or whatever. <laughs> Maybe he'd be on board then. Currently, we were on Death Mountain 
home of the Gorons for a few side quests. It was mostly for Ori to inform the Goron mining foreman about some places that they could find tasty rocks, and also for me to establish some better trade routes. Yes, everyone, make optimal use of this side quest, except for you, Linkbeard. I guess, uh, sit around and try and find the Gorgon's bracelet so you can pick up bomb flowers or whatever. That's what happens in the game. It has to be what happens in, in, <laughs> in the D&D &D session, right? Otherwise, how do you know if you're winning? Which is not how a tabletop game works at all. Anyways, <laughs> while we were there, we were given a side quest to find a Goron that got a little lost on the volcano. Jesus, how do you get lost on the volcano, boy? He's probably hanging out up there with that great fairy in the fairy fountain with the pointy boobs. That was like my sexual awakening when I was a young child. <laughs> Fat ass. <laughs> Coronavirus! Thank you. Uh, we were offered some rubies as rewards. Linkbeard didn't want to do that because it was wasting precious time and it could be used to find Princess Zelda. You know, all that rubbish that we had gone over before. Yeah, but what about the Goros bracelet? How are you supposed to lift up the, the rocks or whatever? Did you at least buy the fire resistance tunic? Remember, it's supposed to be just like it is in Ocarina of Time. <laughs> but of course, Linkbeard was outvoted, and we went to explore the active volcano. Okay, everybody, get that fire resistance tunic then. <laughs> Every once in a while, Dungeon Master would roll his dice, and if we were unlucky, we would have to do a deck saving throw to avoid any rocks that might have spewed from the volcano. Ah uh, yes, I remember it well. Never go up there without a potion or a fairy. Never really go up there at all for that matter once you've met the great fairy. But I digress. <laughs> Eventually we found the most evil Bokoblin and the bane of our existence. Melon Lord. <laughs> yes, I love Melon Lord. You guys remember Melon Lord? Yeah, he's the best worst bad guy. I am Melon Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the recurring joke enemy that exists only to steal melons. <laughs> I love him. That is a great idea by the DM. I'm sure it's been done in games before, but this is the first that I've uh, experienced it, at least on the channel. Somehow, Melon Lord managed to gather a few Choo Choo's. Uh oh. For those that don't know, Choo Choo's are basically slimes with goofy looking eyes. They come in a variety of colors with different abilities. For example, red choo-choos are electric, and red choo-choos explode and set you on fire. It varied from game to game. Anybody got a boomerang? No? Alright, we're screwed. <laughs> Linkbeard, in his infinite wisdom, charged in with his sword and went right about stabbing one of these choo-choos, which I guess went fine, until, you know, it exploded <laughs> and set him on fire. <laughs> How did you not know this was going to happen? Aren't you like the biggest Zelda fan out of any of the people playing? Jesus Christ, dude. The beards just never learn. Never ever. <laughs> he looked pissed, but Dungeon Master was nice and let him do a deck saving throw, and he ended up only taking half damage. Linkbeard was salty as hell about that regardless. We still bested Melon Lord, and the Bokoblin ran off to steal melons elsewhere in the land. How can you be mad about half damage? He's like, Ugh, I can't believe I got hit. Like, wh what did you expect to happen, bro? You don't have any ranged weapons? I thought he was like a fighter ranger or something like that. Link is nowhere near this stupid when I play as him. <laughs> All of us had taken some damage. Akira took the most. But Linkbeard had to make this all about him and how the DM uh, tricked him into attacking an enemy that would randomly explode when killed. That's bullshit, he grumbled. I shouldn't have taken that much damage. It's stupid. <laughs> it is not stupid, friend. You are stupid. How could you not see that coming from a mile away? Gee, you've described this enemy that sounds similar to enemies that I've heard about in the game. So let's equate the two. Or does he lack the, the intelligence to do something like that? DM just shrugged. Actions have consequences, reminded DM. 
Remember when Potato nearly drowned? That's the same kind of thing. Eh, I don't remember that actually, but good because Potato elucidates for us. <laughs> My character had jumped into a river to save a dog. Said dog managed to get out just fine, but I almost died. To be honest, it wouldn't be the dumbest way that one of my characters had died. That's pretty valiant, isn't it? Saving a dog, but, you know, probably not the smartest decision that you could have made, all at all. I think that one dog would have much less of an effect on society than one Gerudo emissary, or really any humanoid, <laughs> for that matter. Do I love dogs? Yes, absolutely. Am I almost going to die for a dog? Maybe in game. <laughs> Not in real life, though. In real life, I would pick a human's life over a dog's life every single time. And for some reason, that seems to be a, a controversial opinion. So yeah, yell at me about it in the comments if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I like killing my characters in dumb ways, but I felt that the dog stuff was more relevant. I've talked about killing my characters in stupid ways in the past. The dumbest way that OP has killed a character, and in fact, still is the dumbest way, was my character setting a fire in a room full of explosive stuff without checking the door to see if it was unlocked. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> How did you get into the room if the door wasn't... Oh, well, I guess you can open the door and then shut it. And then it's locked from the other side or something like that. But I will say this. At least it was quick. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Anyways, we continued on. Found the Goron. And fought an Igneo Talus. Lava Rock Golem. And a few Igneo Peblets. Baby Igneo Talus. Very weak. And we ended up fighting this thing. Outside of a cave decorated with some religious looking artifacts that looked extremely old. Nina and Ludo wanted to explore it, but Linkbeard once again fought against it uh, because it had nothing to do with Zelda. Oh my god. Can we just make him like a little Zelda doll or something to tide him over? <laughs> Every time you think about Zelda, just squeeze the doll. It's gonna be fine. Like I said, buddy, we need the heart containers, right? <laughs> but when Ludo pointed out that it was a religious thing and therefore could have stuff to do with Hylia, Linkbeard immediately led the charge into the cave. Yeah, I saw that flip-flop coming. <laughs> I guess that's the secret to dealing with him. You just have to frame everything through, uh, like, oh, maybe this will help us to find Zelda. Just like collecting the heart containers might help us to find her at the end of our adventure. He really just wants to blaze to the end and have that be it. It's so boring, bro. Ugh. Anyways, we found an old shrine in the cave, but it wasn't to the goddess Hylia, but the goddess Din. In the Zelda universe, there are four goddesses. Din, Nehru, and Furor. Din is the goddess of power, Nehru is the goddess of wisdom, and Furor is the goddess of courage. They are the creators of Hyrule, and the ones who created the Triforce. Hylia kinda came up later with her time magic and stuff, and I guess she was meant to be the keeper of the Triforce? Yeah, we just gonna retcon all of that? That's absolutely fine. <laughs> Not my favorite bit of the lore, obviously, but uh, I didn't write the shit. What do you want? <laughs> uh, this was a waste, muttered Linkbeard. Let's go. Ori questioned the DM a little bit about the Shrine for Din, and asked how important this goddess was for Goron, as Ori's character was a Goron, if you recall. Dungeon Master explained how, in the games, the goddesses aren't really explored that much, but everyone knows about them, and as Din is associated with fire, and since Gorons live on a volcano, and because they are possibly one of the strongest non-monster races in Hyrule, Din is probably a pretty big deal to him. Yeah, that is kind of weird that they never really establish religion as a thing that happens at all in Hyrule. Everybody just kind of accepts it, but there's no, like, worshippers or anything like that. The closest you get to a church is, like, the Temple of Time. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm definitely interested in that, and I'm glad that Dungeon Master was able to put some thought into it. So I asked him if I, as a Gerudo, might also feel that Din was important 
because my people have kind of a bit of a history with Din and the Triforce and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, long story short, Din was also important to me too. Linkbeard scoffed at that and said something about, <laughs> Din's an evil goddess. I can only assume that this is because Ganon, the main bad guy of the series, uses the Triforce of Power, while Zelda and Link use Wisdom and Courage, respectively. Ain't that just like Linkbeard put things in the most black and white terms? There's no such thing. It's all shades of gray. It ain't the Triforce of Power, it's how you use it. But I don't expect Linkbeard to understand that type of depth, even if that type of depth is not deep at all. That's about as deep as a, a wet sidewalk. <laughs> That's basic, bro. Uh, Ludo, in character, chided Linkbeard. You shouldn't be so rude to Din. She's one of the golden goddesses. Without Din, Hyrule wouldn't exist. It's not her fault that the demonic force known as Ganon uses her part of the Triforce. Linkbeard grumbled and complained both in and out of character yeah, that Din was definitely an evil goddess, which is total bullcrap. So since Ori and I technically kind of worship Din, we decided to pay our respects and say a little prayer to the goddess. The two of us ended up getting a blessing from Din. Both Ori and I got a permanent plus two to strength and a plus one to constitution. We were both surprised and I thought that Linkbeard was going to lose his mind. Instead, he had a thoughtful look upon his face. Now he's going to pray to the evil goddess for a stat boost. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, are there other shrines out there? He asked. Like, uh, one for Nehru and one for Faror? With similar blessings, but for stats more associated with wisdom and courage? Dungeon Master nodded. Yep. I put the shrines in different places than they were in Breath of the Wild, since I'm kind of using that map anyways. This way you guys can't just run off to that location and get to the shrine for no logical reason. Man, he definitely planned this out. I'd like to get the supplementals for this game. Can I play a, a Ocarina of Time? I mean, Legends of Zelda game 2? <laughs> I promise I won't be a Linkbeard. Linkbeard had an almost sage-like look on his face. <sighs> I see. Uh, then we should look for Faror Shrine next. And the Master Sword. And if we have time, then, uh, Nehru Shrine, <laughs> I guess. We were all kind of confused as to why the hell Linkbeard suddenly wanted to find these shrines. Then again, he was kind of trying to make his character Link. No, OP, <laughs> not kind of. 100% <laughs> definitely unequivocally like Link. It was painfully obvious that Linkbeard was trying to become Link. Like, he was a Hylian fighter slash ranger. He wanted Link's very specific horse. He was obsessed with Zelda, wanted the Master Sword, was obsessed with Hylia, and was trying to find the Shrine of the Goddess associated with, uh, courage. Yeah, but like, the actual Link in-game didn't do any of these things. He was just a lazy boy without a fairy, right? <laughs> and then all this kind of fell into his lap, and he's like, okay, I guess I'll save the world, whatever. <laughs> But Linkbeard wants to save the world so bad, and that is the reason that he will be 100% unable to do it. So, why do we need to seek out the shrines? asked Ludo. I thought you wanted to look for the queen. Well, yeah, but if it gives us a boost to our stats, it can only help, right? <laughs> no, you idiot. Come up with a reason in-game. You can't just use an out-of-character explanation for why your character's doing something. Have you never played tabletop before? Ugh! <laughs> How is he so bad at everything? Ugh. Uh, Ludo and Nina clearly need to go to Nehru Shrine, and I need to get to Faror Shrine. <laughs> what about me? Asked Akira. I get nothing? Eh. You aren't really powerful, or smart, or courageous. Uh-oh, we got another beard battle going on. It is brewing. <laughs> Akira pouted a bit at that. It was kind of harsh in my opinion. Akira's character had really good character development so far. 
Like I said, he wasn't as much of a lone wolf character anymore. He was more of a mildly annoying little brother that was now discovering who he was and how he could still be a functioning member of society while, you know, collecting bugs and trying to sell them to every merchant that we came across. <laughs> See, that is good character development. He's got a thing. He's a person in-game, not just copying something that he saw. It's so fun to make it your own. Why don't you want to make it your own, Linkbeard? Ugh. <laughs> I'm just raging at how this dude decided to play, which is probably not the solution to get him to play differently. Anyways, everyone can get a blessing from a goddess, said DM. If you manage to get to the shrine to get a blessing is another thing, which was fair enough. Once the campaign was over, Dungeon Master lamented to me about some of the cool places that he wanted us to go, but we either ignored it or didn't pick up the side quest or didn't even realize that it was a thing that we could do. Yeah, that's the problem with players, isn't it? <laughs> also, the main reason that I never really want to be a Dungeon Master because it's just like herding cats. <laughs> the players are always going to do the thing that you least expect them to do. And you like dangle a piece of bait in front of them and they're like, meh. <laughs> I could see Linkbeard trying to formulate a plan in his mind. Probably putting the hamster in charge of making things run in his head under tremendous stress. I wondered what he was going to do with that idea of his, but... Rewards needed to be collected, so we each got a ruby, and I, Nina, and Ludo immediately traded the ruby for rupees, which is a little confusing, I guess. <laughs> Ori, being a Goron, ate his. <laughs> I love that. Akira was keeping his for a side quest that he was keeping track of. His crazy grandpa promised him some cool weapons if he gathered some gems for him. Despite Akira's lone wolf mentality, he had a huge family with cousins and aunts all over the place. A ruby was one of the items that he needed. Linkbeard also kept his gem, although probably for not as good a reason. Eating is the best way to go, I'm pretty sure. I love that. Gimp your own character a little bit money-wise because yeah, this is what the character in-game would do. Rubies is delicious. <laughs> It should also be noted that Linkbeard was hoarding gemstones, like a lot of gemstones. Whenever we were gifted with a gemstone, he would try and squirrel it away. I wasn't sure if he actually had some grand plan for it. He doesn't. <laughs> Maybe he wanted to buy some important gear. Maybe he was just keeping them if someone wanted one for a side quest. Maybe he wanted to keep them if we were low on rupees at some point. Maybe. Just maybe he was keeping them as an emergency food source if we end up in a place where Ori can't eat rocks. <laughs> Is anybody keeping track of hunger in this game? I know it's supposed to be a function in D&D, &D, but I've never had a group that was like paying attention to stuff enough to be like, oh, we need to sleep now. We need to eat now. <laughs> it's always just kind of murder hobo with a little bit of RP mixed in. <laughs> and that's the way I like it. Nina was the one that actually brought the gemstone question to light. So, why do you have all those gemstones, Linkbeard? Like, are you going to buy stuff with it? Nope, said Linkbeard. When we find the Queen of Zelda, I want to make sure they're able to go back into the lap of luxury. <laughs> okay, I guess it is an in-character reason. He's going to woo my lady. <laughs> I should have seen this one coming a mile away, honestly. Ori laughed when he heard that. What? <laughs> so you're going to buy them some horse-drawn jeep? A Rito-powered helicopter? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll figure something out. Spoiler, he did not. Oh, well, I did call that one. <laughs> I also saw that one coming a mile away. Dude is just a chicken with his head cut off. Hoarding all the shinies because, uh, because shiny. <laughs> After that, we got into another fight with some Igneo Peblets, where Ori rolled like shit and got punched in the shins until he almost got critted. Nina was a smart bird and stocked up on a lot of herbs to make health potions. 
They weren't very powerful, but they were at least good enough, until we got to a place that we deemed safe enough for a long rest. Yes indeed, preparation is key! Shout out to the Ritos. Always got their head on a swivel. Get it? Because some of them are owls, I assume? Never mind. <laughs> At the end of the session, Linkbeard was the first one to leave. Something about work again. I still, for the life of me, had no idea what the hell it was that he did. Maybe some 24-hour fast food place? No idea. But when he left, Akira kind of called us all together. Hey guys, um, I'm pretty sure Linkbeard wants to try and kill Ori, he confessed. We were all a little bit surprised by this. Really? asked Ori. I thought we were kind of getting along. Is he still mad about the breakboard thing? Akira shrugged. No idea, but I thought he had a few health potions, so I glanced at his sheet. He did. He has like eight of them. He didn't even offer to give one to Ori when he almost died. This, if you don't know, is kind of a big sin in D&D. Like, unless you have a plan for something important, you usually share resources with people. They're your party, after all. If Linkbeard was hoarding resources, like you hoard cheese in Skyrim, well then we were so going to have some in-game drama. Does anybody actually use the cheese in Skyrim? <laughs> I had a roommate who called me crazy for picking up all this food, but yeah, I would use it over health potions. But there's no point in that either, because you get so many health potions in the game. So what do you do, just leave the food? It's always a catch-22. I could never figure that out. My pack rat side just won't let go. <laughs> sweet rolls, that's what I keep in my house. Hundreds and hundreds of sweet rolls. Uh, maybe he just forgot, suggested Ludo, trying to give Linkbeard the benefit of the doubt. I have trouble remembering all the stuff that I have in my inventory. Dungeon Master did not look happy. You know, I actually expected this from you, Akira. Being the lone wolf and all. Hey, my character arc is lone wolf, reluctantly working together, becoming friends, found family. I think it's pretty clear that my character isn't a selfish idiot. They're just, uh, you know, a teenage idiot. <laughs> and I love Akira with his separation of like, this is my character, this is who I am as a person. I totally thought he was gonna be that guy, but next to Ori, he's like one of my favorite characters in this story. At least in-game, I mean. Quite admirable, yes. Look, I'll have a talk with him, said DM. I'll, I'll fix this. I highly doubted that DM could fix this, but okay, I guess I gave him the benefit of the doubt as well. Since, you know, that was kind of the thing that's going around lately. <laughs> Despite the crappy things that Linkbeard is doing out of game, he isn't really that bad of a D&D player. Isn't he, though? <laughs> he was doing a lot of little things that were annoying, but nothing that we could definitively say was a good enough reason to 100% kick him out. At least, not just yet. Even out of game, the worst he had done was trying to commission me to draw Lolly Zelda, so... You know, the quest continues... And much to my chagrin. <laughs> we got three parts of Linkbeard left. It's going well so far. This wasn't that heavy of an episode, but I get a feeling that the last three parts are going to be uh, quite something, as I've been told by some people who read ahead just a little bit. Although I will say that uh, hoarding potions, while it is a mortal sin, if you have an in-character reason to do it, it's not always the best excuse to go to, eh, it's what my character would do. But maybe, you know, Link, he's the hero of time, he's not used to working with other people or something like that. Then okay, maybe I, I let him slide, give him a little pass. But no, he's just watching Ori die and not doing anything about it. Which, watching him die is a lot different than, you know, actively killing him. If you really want to be a man about it, then step up. Let's get some PvP going in this game. Although I'm pretty sure that Linkbeard knows that a Hylian cannot take on a Goron. <laughs> They're armored. They've got muscles like nothing you've ever seen. They'll roll into you, roll over you. It's over. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So I guess he is taking the, the sneaky rat way out. 
but I suppose that is nothing but what we would expect from beards. So we went outside just in time to see Akira punching Linkbeard right in the face. <laughs> the Legend of Linkbeard, Part 8. The time Akira punched Linkbeard. Well, Akira, I thought he was going to be that guy. I thought he was, like, not very likable in the first couple of stories, but he's winning some points with me by punching a rival beard. <laughs> so let's see how that comes about, I guess. Hello again, everyone. Hi, tiny hairy potato. <laughs> the potato is back with another semi-satisfying story about Linkbeard getting his ass kicked both in and out of game. Oh, he does that to himself, honestly. <laughs> Remember the last story he punched the board and broke his hand? Is that still a thing? I hope he walks around with his hand all bandaged up, a reminder of his own incompetency. <laughs> so, uh, full disclosure, I did get permission from Akira to talk about this because this part of the story revolves around him. On a side note, hi Akira. <laughs> I know you're reading or listening to this. And yes, I know my spelling still sucks, so uh, go screw yourself. <laughs> I mean, OP's spelling hasn't been that bad, all things considered. We've definitely had some more harder to decipher stories, I guess is what I'll call them. <laughs> and also, uh, yeah, welcome to the fold if you are listening to it, Akira. So Akira has early onset schizophrenia. It runs in his family on his mom's side. Ah, that's heavy. From what he's said, it's mostly audio and rather mild when he's on his medication, so yeah, he does hear voices in his head. I hope you stay on that medication. If it helps, I mean, there's no reason not to, although I know that sometimes schizophrenia sufferers can be convinced by the voices to not take the medication, so yes, please, please do take the medications, I must reiterate. Um, I'm no expert on the matter, nor am I, and I can only go off of what he's told me. He doesn't hear voices that, like, tell him to kill or anything like that. It's apparently like a quiet white noise in the background when he's on his meds. When not, it ranges from whispering to shouting. God, that sounds so hard to live with, dude. How can you concentrate on anything at that point? Somebody yelling inside your head, you can't just walk and get away from it? I don't even like people yelling when I'm sitting around, it's like, Jesus. My deepest sympathies for that, but I am glad that you are getting through it. So he said that it's hard to avoid what some of the voices say, but usually it is pretty tame stuff, like, take another jelly bean, and stuff like that. <laughs> I got some jelly beans. Take another jelly bean, you ain't gotta tell me twice. <laughs> Are there actually jelly beans? Or is the voice just like making stuff up? God, that's got to be quite a, a thing to delve into. I should probably do some reading on this at some point. So at the time of this part of the story, Akira was either having his medication adjusted or he was being put on different ones. So he wasn't 100% there, but it wasn't anything that he hadn't gone through before. When I got to Dungeon Master's place for the next session, Akira was already there on the couch. He looked like he was kinda high or something. I asked him what was up and he explained to me that he has early onset schizophrenia and his doctor changed up his meds a little bit so he's probably not gonna be fully there for the game tonight. After learning this, I only had one question on my mind. How the hell are you getting home tonight? My boyfriend's picking me up, said Akira in a really weird flat tone. Very different from his usual excitable self. Uh, I probably won't be much fun to play D&D with for a few weeks, but uh, I'll try my best. Hey, don't push yourself. Like, I've never been screwed up because of that kind of medication, but when I had my gallbladder removed, I was really messed up on Endone for like a few weeks after, and it was pretty bad. Yeah, there's no shame in stepping aside and things like that. If the game is gonna push you a bit too far, then that's cool. We'll just put your character on autopilot for a little bit. Especially if you're like screwed up on meds, you're probably gonna be on autopilot anyways. But if the game is something that helps you cope and deal with the situation at hand, then hell yeah, sit in, do the thing. You know what I'm saying? Akira made a strange noise. 
kind of like a dry chuckle, but he didn't smile. It was kind of unsettling, to say the least, but hey, whatever. I myself am no stranger to mental illnesses and their weird happenings on the human body. I was diagnosed with depression and social anxiety when I was younger, and some of the medication I was on at the time, though it didn't have much of a negative effect on me, could have turned me into a drooling mess, among other things. Yep, I feel that. I got both of those things as well, OP, and while I'm not on any medication, it does make it hard to deal, whether you're on meds or not. Sometimes I get a message from somebody, they're like, hey, I, I sent you a message a month ago, and I'm just like, I'm not in a state to deal right now. I can make the content because that's basically just me <laughs> doing a thing, but interacting with other people, it, it can be a lot, especially when I'm in a depressed place, as I have been uh, on and off recently. But anyways, the others eventually showed up, and Akira pretty much told him that he just wasn't feeling too well today. I don't know if he was just tired of explaining why he was acting so differently, or if he was unsure of how they would react to his mental illness. The media at large hasn't been very kind to people with mental illnesses, especially those with disassociative identity disorder and schizophrenia. Yet most media makes both of those two groups look like screeching lunatics, which is unfortunate because I haven't really had any face-to-face -face interaction with people with either of these two illnesses, so I can't really judge it 100%. Considering that one, no face-to-face -face interaction, and two, most of what I've been presented has been through the lens of media, which, as I've said before, is not an accurate way to uh, consume things. But yeah, I think the main reason that Akira opened up to me about that might have been because I have insomnia. Like, sometimes I stay up for 48 hours kind of insomnia. Take some valerian root and call me in the morning. <laughs> Chew some valerian root and get more exercise. <laughs> it's a Fight Club reference. Anybody? Nope. Okay. Well, <laughs> when that happens, I just tend to experience some mild hallucinations. Mostly like seeing insects out of the corner of my eye. Stuff like that. Luckily, I got no experience with that either. I'm a real good sleeper. I will stay up for 24 hours at a time, but once my head hits the pillow, I am out like a light. <laughs> So, we get started, and apparently Linkbeard was in a bad mood as well that day. Some crap about his boss being a jerk or something. From what I could gather from his rantings, Linkbeard works in either a games shop or an appliance shop. Maybe JB Hi-Fi? The point being, he was in a crappy mood. But Linkbeard had a drive, and he was determined to find the Master Sword. <laughs> Gaming shop or appliance shop? There is a vast chasm between those two things. <laughs> I want to know how we arrived at this conclusion. In my own head, we're just going to say that he works at the appliance shop because I think he'd enjoy the gaming shop a little too much, and I really do want to see Linkbeard suffer. <laughs> Why do we even need to find the Master Sword? asked Ludo. None of us are Link, so we can't wield it. Even if we could pick it up and swing it around, we wouldn't be able to use it the way that it was meant to be used. Heh, <laughs> well, maybe not a Zora, said Linkbeard, but someone courageous and pure of heart would be able to. Oh, Linkbeard, you're the dungeon master now? All right, <laughs> take a seat, roll some math rocks, let's do the thing. And before the session ends, I probably will have quit, because Linkbeard is a horrible player, and I think he would make an even worse dungeon master. <laughs> so, you think we're all screwed? I asked. My character's a passive-aggressive misandrist. Nina is stubborn. Ludo thinks poorly of anyone with low intelligence. Akira is mistrusting. Ori is an unstoppable monster when provoked. And Linkbeard, well, your character is just egotistical. My character is not egotistical. <laughs> Maybe you're not trying to roleplay him in an egotistical way. That's just uh, a bit of your real self peeking through the character, isn't it? Like, dude, you think you're the hero of time. <laughs> you're like Neo in the Matrix, the one, even though nobody has uh, 
given any signs towards that. That requires at least just a tiny bit of ego, doesn't it? <laughs> kind of is, said Ludo. Anyway, Potato's right. None of our characters are pure of heart enough for the goddess Hylia to let us wield the Master Sword. She probably won't even let any of us pick it up. If anything, she'd probably smite us. Uh, would any of us be able to survive a smiting? Asked Dory. <laughs> DM just shrugged. I guess that depends on how much you piss off Hylia and how I roll the dice. <laughs> like I would piss off Hylia, said Link. I pretty much worship her completely. Are we going to find a shrine to Hylia anytime soon? There's one closer to Castletown, you know, the Temple of Time, said DM. But you uh, kind of walked right past it to go on your mission. So you could probably visit it if you happen to go past Castletown again at some point. Anyways, the game progressed and we picked up information about the Kokiri Forest, a.k.a. the Lost Woods, a.k.a. where the Master Sword is generally located. At least in A Link to the Past, it was in the Temple of Time in Ocarino Time. I think it was in, like, some ruins or something in Wind Waker. I can't quite recall. It's been a while since I played any of these Zelda games, <laughs> except Breath of the Wild. So the Kokiri Forest wasn't too far from where we were, and Linkbeard practically dragged all of us into the Lost Woods. <laughs> he basically explained his reasoning for going there as follows. Uh, the Lost Woods is one of the safest places in Hyrule, so the Queen should be there. If not her, then we could ask the Great Deco Tree for advice. He's really smart, and if he can't figure out where the queen is, uh, then no one can. I'm sure the Great Deku Tree probably has some ideas on where she is, but we have to remember that he is a tree, therefore rooted in the ground. <laughs> it's not like he's following the queen around, watching her every move. Unfortunately, Linkbeard was right in his own way. The Great Deku Tree was very knowledgeable. And if it had anything to do with Hylia, then he would probably know. Is it Deku Tree or Deku Tree? I usually say Deku, but <laughs> I've heard people say Deku before too. Seems like a 50-50 split. Somebody's going to be upset in the comments about my pronunciation. But that's okay. You can't win them all. <laughs> Plus, I kind of wanted to see if Dungeon Master would let me climb the great Deku Tree. <laughs> That's disrespect. He's like a elder forest god. No, you can't climb him. <laughs> there could have been some goodies up there. Yeah, Deku nuts, Deku sticks. What do you want? <laughs> Show me your Deku nuts. Take your stick and light my torch. <laughs> That's madness. So we get to the ominous entrance to the forest, only to find a caravan where some people were freaking the hell out. <laughs> Two Hylian women, a toddler, and an older man. They were a group of merchants that were traveling west towards Rito territory when they stopped for the night, and in the morning, one of the children was gone. The toddler told the adults that the little boy walked off into the lost woods following a firefly, but never came back. Yeah, he's a skull kid now. Give up on that. <laughs> Now, in Legend of Zelda, getting lost in the Lost Woods is very, very bad. This is because, as stated before, the Lost Woods is where the Master Sword is located, and therefore, it has a lot of magical protection. If a child gets lost in the woods, then they turn into a creature known as a Skull Kid. Yay! I was right! <laughs> Now, Skull Kids are kind of chaotic little shits, but they aren't malicious, at least barring the events of Majora's Mask. Either way, the boy lost in the woods would turn into a Skull Kid inevitably, unless we found them and brought them back to their family. Ah, uh, being a Skull Kid ain't so bad, you just hang out on the tree stump, play your ocarina, give heart pieces out every once in a while if somebody does the Simon Says game right. <laughs> Really, I want to know more about the mythology of Skull Kid. What do they do all the time? What is the diet like for a Skull Kid? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Now, as to anyone who wonders why one of the adults didn't go into the wood to find their child, because only children turn into Skull Kids, well, if an adult gets lost in the Lost Woods, then they turn into Astolfos, which are these big undead skeletons with swords who attack living things. Dungeon Master changed them around a little so that the Stalfos are pretty much guardians of the Lost Woods that are there to stop people from trying to get to the Master Sword. Yeah, I'll go for that in the headcanon, why not? Really, is being a Stalfos even that bad? Hey, you get to live forever! <laughs> I'll be off into those woods in no time. Yeah! But now I can't do the neckbeard voice anymore because I got no cheeks or tongue. Actually, I probably couldn't even make YouTube videos anymore because I got no vocal cords. Yeah, never mind. That That's a bad idea. I take it all back. <laughs> I don't want to be a Stalfos. Uh, so they didn't have much in the way of offering a reward for us, but a few rupees. We still accepted, though. Linkbeard was kind of annoyed, obviously, that this would stop us from getting to the Master Sword even faster. We decided to have a buddy system based on skills while in the forest to make sure that we wouldn't stray too far from the main group, and hopefully, none of us would get turned into a Stalfos. I was paired with Ludo, Nina with Ori, and Akira was with Linkbeard. Alright, so the Edgelords go together, boyfriend and girlfriend go together, and the two relatively normal leftovers <laughs> go together. That checks out to me. Things were alright for the most part. Before we left, Ludo talked with the boy's father, and we gathered some basic information about what he looked like, his name, all that good stuff. If I remember correctly, we were basically looking for a feral gremlin of a child of around five to six years of age. His most distinguishing features were that he was blonde and he had a necklace with a big blue shell pendant. Five to six years old? Yeah, that's about when they transform into feral gremlins. But a lot of that depends on parenting, obviously. So maybe they didn't have too much time for uh, parenting while they were traveling merchants. They didn't impress upon this child the need to not run off into the forest and die. <laughs> Linkbeard grumbled the whole time that hey, we should just head towards the center of the forest uh, to find the Master Sword. I mean, the kid is probably a Skull Kid by now anyways, he would grumble. There's no point. Akira, still not 100% himself, shot back at him in that off-putting monotone. Then why the hell are you even playing if all you're going to do is whine and complain for no goddamn reason? Everyone was kind of surprised because Akira didn't usually say anything close to that. He usually didn't swear either. Though obviously he didn't cuss this time either because YouTube has been breaking my balls with the monetization lately. <laughs> So we just do a little uh, radio edit. I hope that's okay. Nina quickly changed the conversation and tried to get us back on track looking for the lost child. Which kinda worked, but people were sort of unsure what to do with Akira exactly. We hadn't dealt with a disgruntled Akira before, but everyone had a bad day once in a while and so we did our best to not rock the boat too much. Apart from Linkbeard, because, you know, he's a neckbeard. <laughs> he is either not aware of the social situation or simply doesn't care for anyone but himself. Also, I thought you guys split up into groups, so how is Nina talking to other people? Unless it's out of character, I guess that works. Sure, why not? So, we eventually found the kid hanging out with a random flute playing Skull Kid. Oh yeah, he's getting lured in. Linkbeard wanted to kill the Skull Kid so that we could grab the little boy and go, but Nina and Ludo wanted to talk to the Skull Kid first. Can Skull Kids talk? Yeah, I guess they can. <laughs> they were pretty far away from us, and the Skull Kid could just grab the boy and run. Ludo approached the Skull Kid and attempted to make conversation with him. He tried to either lure the kid over to us with some candy or bribe the Skull Kid to go away with the same candy. It was going pretty well too, until Linkbeard got tired of waiting and shot the Skull Kid. I mean, they are just children, right? They can't be that difficult to murder in cold blood. <laughs> Although I probably wouldn't suggest it. They might come out of the woodwork. You don't even know how many Skull Kids are lurking in the Lost Woods. Ugh. The Skull Kid freaked out and ran away. 
But Nina and I were able to get to the kid and calm him down while everybody else yelled at Linkbeard for being an impatient dick. What the hell is wrong with you? asked Ludo. My plan was working. We could have actually gotten the kid without shooting the Skull Kid. And the Skull Kid could have shown us to the Deku Tree. Uh, it was taking too long, complained Linkbeard. Uh, we're probably almost there anyway. Uh, right, DM? Uh, DM? Well, Dungeon Master was behind his screen rolling dice. A lot of dice. Oh my god, did I call this too? Are the Skull Children waiting in ambush? <laughs> When he was done rolling, he kind of sighed sadly and shook his head. <sighs> As the Skull Kid's screams of shock and fear ring out through the Lost Woods, it alerts the nearby Stalfos, who, until recently, had been laying peacefully as piles of bones. They rise up and walk towards you. Roll for initiative. Ah, uh, see what you've done now, you big dum-dum? <laughs> So, because of this chucklehead, we had to fight four Stalfos and a Stalnox. A Stalnox is basically the Stalfos version of a Cyclops, so yeah, pretty much a mini boss. I was screaming, they were screaming, everyone was screaming! Mostly at Linkbeard not understanding that actions have consequences. Yeah, don't even bother trying to explain that to a Neckbeard. Their intelligence is about on the same level as a dog. They can't relate to abstract concepts like cause and effect. <laughs> I mean, Linkbeard had done a few things like this previously, but the consequences had mostly been us getting, you know, less reward money or some people treating the party with a bit of disdain. This was the first time that we got our asses kicked. And oh boy, did they get kicked hard. By the end of the fight, Nina had been downed once, Ori and I were on like 10 HP each, Ludo had the most HP because he ran around everyone while shooting spells, Linkbeard was also hurt pretty badly, but he took one of his health potions so he was back to full HP, Akira himself was down to 1 HP, Nina couldn't find any plants to make health potions, so Akira looked over at Linkbeard and asked him for help. Mind giving me a health potion, Linkbeard? What? No! Those are mine, <laughs> said Linkbeard. If you wanted health potions, you should have bought some. Wait, is this in character right now, or are you this much of a douche in real life? Come on, dude, it's a health potion. I'll pay you back for it if it really means that much to you. Akira tries to press the matter. What? Dude, come on, you've got like ten potions. Just give me one, and I will pay you back later. No way! Get your own! This is a team game! You can't hoard all the items like some selfish dragon! I'm not being selfish, I'm just better at managing my resources! Okay, now refute the part about this being a team game. You're supposed to be a party, this is a, a group effort! If everybody else dies, then it's you against... Uh, a mini boss and four Stalfos. <laughs> like, it's not gonna go well. You need their help. I think even the most self serving character would see that it is at their advantage to keep their partners on their feet. Dude can't even, like, see past the nose right on his face. The foresight is just not there. Nina and Ludo calmed the situation with some bumbling, and we actually did manage to find the Great Deku Tree and the Koroks. These are tiny little wooden people that wear leaf masks and wave branches around. They're creatures that are watched over by the Deku Tree. They're very childlike in the way that they talk and act, and overall, they are all very cute. Yeah, they're so fat and round, most of them. I mean, some of them are tall and skinny. I just love when I find one in Breath of the Wild. They always surprise me, popping out. Waha! <laughs> you found me! <laughs> Waha! Whoa. <laughs> Ah, it's a good feel. Gotta love them Kolrogs. The session was running a little late, so the Dungeon Master cut it there with us in the Korok village. Akira was still annoyed, obviously, that Linkbeard didn't give him a health potion, so he went outside to just wait for his boyfriend to pick him up. Linkbeard grumbled his grievances about Akira getting angry at him for not sharing his potions. 
Unfortunately for Linkbeard, everyone was against him. Yeah, what is up with that? I've explained this at length. Keep your teammates on their feet. You cannot do this alone. We reminded him that D&D is a group game where we all win when we work together. If we have the resources to help each other, then we should. This was also a lawfully good campaign, so we weren't trying to dick each other over. Ori even pointed out that Linkbeard was aiming to be a royal guard, and if people found out that he backstabbed people that he was in a group with that were tasked with finding the queen, then he might not ever be welcomed back into the castle. Even if they did, he wasn't going to be allowed to be a royal guard, ever, even if he became a eunuch. <laughs> and of course, when given a taste of his own medicine and almost realizing that he was wrong about the entire situation, he resorts to righteous indignation. <laughs> hey, screw you guys, whined Linkbeard. You just don't know how these games are meant to be played. And none of you have ever played a real tabletop game. He then stormed out. Yeah, good riddance, I guess. Don't come back next week. <laughs> We all just kind of shook our heads at that. We chalked it up to Akira just not having a good day, and his emotions rubbed off on Linkbeard and made him even more insufferable than usual. We were just going to have to write this entire day off and continue on next time. Then, we started to hear angry voices from the front of Dungeon Master's house. We were all kind of confused and wondered if Akira and Linkbeard were going to fight. For some reason, the CRIPPLE FIGHT <laughs> scene from South Park played in my head because neither of these guys were very physically fit, so we all went outside to see what the hell was going on. Honestly, all that kind of makes sense. I am of the opinion that less physically fit people are more apt to fight each other. One, because they see the other person is not physically fit. They see themselves as like bigger and tougher than the other person, whether that's true or not. And two, they're both kind of edgy boys that have uh, probably watched a bit too much anime. You know, he's going to try and do the <laughs> Kamehameha wave or something like that. <laughs> Bigger people who are like physically stronger, less apt to throw blows because they know the the damage that they can do with them. But I don't know, man. It seems like something just kind of boiled over here, and uh, <laughs> I'm glad that I get to witness it at the very least. So we went outside just in time to see Akira punching Linkbeard right in the face. <laughs> Beautiful. Wind it back. Replay that. <laughs> Akira isn't the strongest, so Linkbeard didn't go down like a sack of potatoes, but Linkbeard did end up with a pretty big bruise on his face. They were shouting and swearing at each other for a bit, before Akira walked off to the other side of the garden and kind of crouched down by the fence, muttering to himself. Linkbeard didn't follow it back up? That's big of him, you know? He just took his punch, he's like, okay, I'm not gonna hit you back. Was he scared at that point, or was he actually being the bigger person? Hmm, there's something to ponder. Now, Linkbeard wanted to have a go at Akira, but DM quickly got between them and told Linkbeard to back the hell up and give Akira some time to calm down. I'm guessing Akira was having a break from reality of some kind, which was clearly not good. Nina sat next to Akira and very gently talked to him, trying to get him to calm down. Thankfully, or not so thankfully, DM lived in a questionable part of town, like we were pretty sure that there was a crack house the next street over, so it was unlikely that the cops were going to get called, so there was plenty of time for Akira to come back to reality. Yeah, living next to a crack house is a bad thing, unless you're really into crack. <laughs> and then it's super convenient. <laughs> <laughs> While this was going on, Ludo and I were looking up how to best help someone experiencing a break from reality. Is that something you can Google? I guess. They got a wiki how for everything. Meanwhile, Ori was in between stopping Linkbeard from having a go at Akira and making sure that Nina was okay and not about to get attacked by Akira. Yeah, needless to say, it was a right royal mess. Yeah, not the kind of mess that I like to see, honestly. Of all the fights that we've seen, this one is probably the saddest. Because it's just, you know, some dude that's having a hard time with his meds. 
I usually love a neckbeard fight, but not this one. Not this time. About five minutes into this shit show, Akira's boyfriend turned up. Let's call him Zack, because he looked kind of like a less muscular Zac Efron circa his high school musical days. As soon as he pulled up, he went over to DM, explained who he was, and asked what was happening. Dungeon Master explained that something happened when we were inside, and Akira was having a psychotic episode. Zack was pretty understanding and said, Yeah, this happens once in a while. Oh, they got the same voice. Zack and DM? That's crazy. <laughs> Usually, when his meds are changed or the dosage is lowered dramatically, so he went over to Akira and sent Nina on her way. After about 10 minutes of them talking quietly to each other, Akira was back enough to apologize for punching Linkbeard out of the blue like that. Weren't they screaming right before that? <laughs> it doesn't seem like it was too out of the blue. Do probably deserved it. If not for this, then for something else. But apologizing is uh, the thing to do, I suppose. Sorry, man, said Akira sheepishly. I honestly thought you said something that was really messed up. I admit I probably got a little paranoid and, um, yeah. I kind of realized after I punched you that maybe things weren't really happening the way that I thought they were happening. So, sorry. Linkbeard looked pissed off, but he had enough social awareness, miraculously, to realize that everyone was more on Akira's side than on his. So he decided to just play it off. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> But if you punch me again, I totally kick your ass. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna happen, for sure. Akira just shrugged. Yeah, uh, fair enough. Zack introduced himself to all of us now that everything had calmed down properly. Sorry we had to meet like this, but maybe next time it'll be less, uh, stressful. Anyway, we should probably stop by the hospital or call Akira's psychiatrist. So we all wished Akira good luck and Zack drove off with him. We were all really shocked about what had just happened. Linkbeard was muttering some hateful things under his breath about that cases and psychos. We could all understand him wanting to vent after getting punched in the face out of nowhere. Like it wasn't Akira's fault that he punched Linkbeard and it probably wasn't Linkbeard's fault that Akira punched him. Honestly, it's probably just karma at work if he, <laughs> if he didn't deserve it in this instant, he definitely deserved it for something else. Go ahead, ask me to draw Lolly Zelda again so you could get your, your teeth broken out. Like, it's really hard to feel bad for this guy at any point after that. I later asked Akira what exactly Linkbeard did or said that made him want to attack him, or if he had a voice in his head that possibly made him attack Linkbeard. And Akira honestly just doesn't remember. He was pretty sure that Linkbeard probably didn't say anything at all. He probably just coughed or something like that. But with how he was acting before, I wouldn't have been surprised if Akira actually did hear him say something, and then his schizophrenia prompted him to punch Linkbeard in response. And I suppose that is the end of our story for today, which is good because this hammering's been going on forever and it's never gonna stop, and I think I'm going a little crazy too. Honestly, with the way Linkbeard stormed out of the house and the dynamic between those two that day, and I, I thought that they said that there was some yelling before the punching happened, which prompted them all to go outside. So yeah, I'm pretty sure something was going on and Akira got gaslit or something into believing that it was the voices that made him punch Linkbeard. When honestly, Linkbeard probably did deserve it, as I've said about three times now. If not for this, then for something else. I don't feel the least bit bad for this dude. I will be grateful that he didn't get knocked unconscious, topple like a, a ton of bricks or anything like that, because, you know, that can cause some brain damage. And Lord knows Linkbeard is probably brain damaged enough already. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, just a, a punch in the mouth, like, okay, he walked away, he's fine, look at him, he's still talking crap. <laughs> Somebody punch him again. Oh, so we've got two more parts of Linkbeard left to go. This one, relatively enjoyable. I like sinking into the tabletop world and then getting yanked back out into the real world. It just adds like a really nice duality to these stories. I'm pretty into these tabletop neckbeard stories, as I'm sure I've said before as well. Master Sork! Do I see the Master Sork? <laughs> <laughs>
You finally decided to return. Better late than ne Holy sh Did you see that? The Legend of Linkbeard, part number nine. Uh, but my master sword. Yep, that's all he's been gunning for this entire time. <laughs> that and a little uh, alone time with Princess Zelda, but I doubt that he's going to get that. Anyways, <laughs> greetings everyone. Hi, tiny hairy potato. The potato is back again for the next part of this misadventure. <laughs> so today, in this misadventure, my dad makes a much more prominent appearance. Like I mentioned briefly, my dad and the Dungeon Master are on good terms. As such, if Dungeon Master's having trouble around his house, my dad is happy to help him fix some stuff up, as long as Dungeon Master pays my dad in beer or some lunch. Oh, he's like a stand-in father figure for uh, the Dungeon Master as well. That's beautiful. Props to your dad. Everybody needs an authority figure that they can have come and uh, help them to fix things or figure out how to fix things. Usually, if it's uh, something within the house, I send my wife. <laughs> the only way you're going to get me to come over to your house uh, is if it's something to do with the car. But uh, I'll take a beer and a free lunch any day of the week. <laughs> Earlier that week... There was a storm, and half of a gum tree fell through DM's fence. Yeah, fixing the fence, I could do that easy enough. But again, my wife is probably the one that would actually volunteer to come do it. <laughs> so, my dad was in the backyard with some tools, fixing up the fence while the rest of us were inside, just chilling, and partaking in small talk while waiting for everyone to turn up. Oh, go keep your dad some company. He's out there working hard, <laughs> trying to earn some free beers, and you're just like all hiding inside. Nah, nah. He's putting in some back-breaking labor. He deserves some company at the very least, or at least the offer of company. I don't know if company was offered, but it should have been. <laughs> the topic revolved around what we were studying at uni or TAFE or what jobs we have. Ori was studying to be a personal trainer and was talking about going to do his first Spartan race, which is basically a race around a huge obstacle course. My sister did it as well, about one year later, and she ended up with a huge bruise on her back and thigh from where she slipped and fell down a ramp. Is this like Ninja Warrior or something like that? <laughs> which is a ridiculous thing to think. I haven't seen that in years, but... That's the only thing I can relate it to. Obstacle course. Yeah, it's Ninja Warrior, basically. <laughs> Nina is a baker and works at a local bakery five days a week. It's a place that does a lot of gluten-free and vegan stuff. Up until this point, Nina has been bringing in lots of homemade goods for us to snack on during our games. Oh, bless. One of the best members to have at your tabletop group, the contributor. And she's a druid, isn't she? So yeah, Nina could join up any time. <laughs> As it turns out, she was testing some of her newer recipes on us. Yo, they got any weed in them? <laughs> <laughs> Ludo was currently in medical school, ooh, and was well on his way to becoming a neurosurgeon. The dude is a lot smarter than he looks, which is saying something since he already looked really smart to begin with. Neurosurgery, bro? That is something else. I can't even imagine it. How do people learn to do things like that? That's terrifying to me. <laughs> but okay, props. Akira was a business major of some kind. I'm still not exactly sure how business major stuff works. <laughs> he did try to explain, but I don't know. Some things just go over my head. Point is, he enjoys it, and he is happy. Yeah, I don't know much about that either has to do with like running a company and stuff like this but i run a company and i'm dumb as hell <laughs> welcome to the red x industries youtube channel <laughs> dm is studying to be a high school history teacher considering how much both dm and i hated school i still have no idea why he wanted to go back there and teach kids but he does really like ancient history specifically aztec and incan cultures I asked him why he didn't get into archaeology, and he admitted that he's a bit too much of a little girl to spend hours in the sun. <laughs> I respect that he actually admitted it. Oh, so it's it's really not about your dad coming over to fix the fence because he can't do it. 
It's about dad coming over because he doesn't want to do it. <laughs> and if you could get your own repairman for a few beers and a free lunch, then yeah, that's cheap as hell. <laughs> Come fix my fence. I got some beers for you. Bender, drink that beer and drop the bottle on the ground. <gasps> Very nice. Get that robot some more beer. Really, dad spent 30 bucks on materials for the 10 bucks in beers? Because <laughs> he's just trying to make a connection. You see? God, that's so sad. I don't know if it's true at all either. <laughs> I just make stuff like this up. I don't know what's happening. But yeah, I definitely do get DM not wanting to be outside. Like I said, I'll fix a car. Basically anything else. Eh, not that into it. Linkbeard said he was studying to be a physicist, specifically a nuclear physicist. I honestly had no words. <laughs> Maybe he was actually smart enough to be able to do that. Maybe his family had deep enough pockets to pay for that course. Maybe they took out a student loan. While student loans aren't as bad as they are in America, they can still be pretty bad depending on where you go. Yeah, and nuke school is like <laughs> four years minimum, I'm pretty sure. If you sign up in the Navy as a nuke, you get like an eight-year contract because they want to train you and then make sure they get the training, <laughs> like, applied to some stuff <laughs> without you being like, oh, four years is up, I'm out. But there were a lot of weird kids in the nuke program. I'm kind of glad that I didn't make it. <laughs> they totally said, oh, wow, ASVAB score super high. You could totally do whatever you want. And then I went in and they're like, oh, you're colorblind? Here's three jobs. <laughs> you pick from these. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Uh, but it was all for the best. It all worked out. I'm sure Linkbeard could do it, but, uh, you know, he's going to need to pull his head out of his ass a little bit in order to be successful at it. Anyway, as for our OP, I took a course in video games design. Hey, I had just finished an assignment where we had to take a video game and talk about their influences how accurate said influences were, and why things were tweaked for video game adaptation. You should have done it on the Atari ET game. Everybody knows that's the best video game adaptation. <laughs> it's the video game that lets you pretend you're ET. <laughs> then we presented it in front of the class with a PowerPoint. I remember that my teacher made it clear that each person could only do one game per franchise. This was to eliminate, like, 15 presentations about Call of Duty and how accurate the battles were. Call of Duty, Call of Duty. <laughs> I ended up doing mine on Bayonetta and talked about how accurate Bayonetta was as a witch and how biblically accurate the Angels of Paradiso were. My experiences at uni for game design could be a whole other neckbeard saga in themselves. Yeah, I'm sure. That's a breeding ground <laughs> if I've ever heard of one. But a relatively interesting one for me. While I haven't sat down to play Bayonetta, it's been recommended to me quite a few times. Maybe one of these days. I don't know. My backlog is just way too strong to add anything else into it at the moment. So, <laughs> I think it will remain a nice thought. Anyways, considering that not a lot of people know what really goes into game design... They did ask me a lot of questions about what a game designer actually did. And honestly, it felt like it was 50% menu flow, 30% documentation, 10% level design, 5% art, and 5% chugging energy drinks and trying not to lose your goddamn mind. But, uh, you know, those percentages vary from game to game. <laughs> Yeah, something like a, a fighting game, you probably take that last 5% and balloon it up to 50%, but the only energy drinks you could drink are Monster Energy because we're hardcore around here. We ain't bitch made, we're making Tekken, bro! <laughs> Monster Energy, put it in your body and ask questions later. It's green, so it's nature. <laughs> or Smash Brothers, but uh, that's the beard of your choice, I feel. Anyway, Linkbeard seemed dismissive of what it was that I was doing. Uh, really? Why would you choose to do something on Bayonetta? Uh, shouldn't you have done something more, uh, your style? You don't know a thing about my style, bro. <laughs> I assume that he meant something like, uh, Farmville. <laughs> or whatever Facebook game was popular at the time. 
Well, one of the other guys already took Silent Hill and Dead Space and Dead Island and Left 4 Dead. Plus, there aren't a lot of single-player fighting games where the protagonist is a woman. Yeah, uh, but she's over-sexualized, said Linkbeard. Women hate sexualized female characters in games. Yeah, <laughs> as a female, Linkbeard would definitely know this. How about the power fantasy? You know what I'm saying? A lot of dudes out there like feeling like they can rip a building in half. I'm sure there's a lot of chicks out there that like feeling sexy sexy from time to time, you know? This is just Linkbeard being offended on behalf of another group in order to win brownie points. And it's pathetic any time that I see it. I kind of just shook my head because I had just done an assignment about how accurate Bayonetta was as a modern day witch. OP retorts, but she's a witch. Witches use sexuality as a weapon to assert themselves because back in medieval Europe, women were 100% controlled by men in a patriarchal society, and the thought of a woman being independent was scary. We started to get into a heated debate about witches for about 10 minutes, until DM got us to shut the hell up and start the game. Nah nah, let him go. If OP can hurt Linkbeard's feelings, then he'll just sit and sulk for the rest of the game, and we really won't have to deal with him. <laughs> but I guess 10 minutes is too long to wait. Everybody's standing there just uh, waiting on you. You gotta hit him with both barrels right out of the gate. <laughs> You're fat and socially inept, Linkbeard. And then he's like, oh, <laughs> now I'm sad. <laughs> there you go. Mission accomplished. So we were in the Korok village to talk to the great Deku tree to see if he knew where we could find the queen. Also, Linkbeard wanted to have a go at the Master Sword because of course he did. Hell, we could see the Master Sword in a stone pedestal. Oh, DM, why did you do this? <laughs> He's just going to freak out about it for the next three hours. <laughs> Dungeon Master described the scene. All the buildings in the village are made of twisted roots of trees and other shrubbery. Not one of you are small enough to be able to fit inside one of these houses, but the child you save could possibly go inside one. The great Deku tree is... Uh, do you see the Master Sword? Asked Linkbeard. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> In the same tone as Samuel L. Jackson asking a motherfucker if they speak English. Do you speak it? English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Yes! Linkbeard asked again. Master Sword, do I see the Master Sword? <laughs> you finally decided to return. Better late than ne Holy shit, did you see that? Uh... Uh, well, yeah, it's right there. Anyway, I, I, I pull out the Master Sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Linkbeard, you are just one of a kind, ain't ya? Everyone looked at Linkbeard with a mix of annoyance and disbelief. The Master Sword was created by the goddess Hylia for the hero of time to wield in her service. I can only imagine that Linkbeard thought that since he was Hylian and looking for the queen to save Zelda, that he would be able to wield the sword. DM took a deep breath and looked Linkbeard dead in the eyes when he uttered the words that all tabletop RPG players fear. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Take a minute, maybe wind it back. <laughs> it seems like a good idea, but uh, you have just been warned in so many words. But Linkbeard didn't seem to give a single damn. Yes, I pull out the Master Sword. <laughs> well, since the Master Sword is protected by magic and is not meant to be wielded by anyone except the hero, I just sat back and waited to see what Dungeon Master was going to do to punish Linkbeard for doing something so stupid. <laughs> Dungeon Master flipped through some papers behind his screen, and then he rolled some dice. All right, said DM calmly. I want to see three strength saving throws. <laughs> oh, boy. Linkbeard looked annoyed, but did as he was told. He rolled okay. Nothing that bad, but also nothing very good. Dungeon Master nodded slowly and scribbled down something behind his screen. Okay. 
I want three constitution saving throws. <laughs> Where's this going, friend? <laughs> Can't we just strike him down with a bolt of lightning and call it a day? Linkbeard was starting to look even more annoyed, but managed to make okay rolls for those checks as well. We all waited with bated breath for Dungeon Master's decision as he himself started to roll some dice while humming to himself like a sadistic bastard. What, <laughs> after what felt like forever, Dungeon Master had a somber look on his face as he described the following events. Death! Death and destruction! <laughs> Despite how much Linkbeard tried, he simply couldn't pull the Master Sword from the stone. It was stuck, firmly inside. Furthermore, it sapped the life out of him, knocking him back down to just one HP. The only one that had seemed surprised by this was Linkbeard. He looked like he was going to flip the table in an attempt to rush Dungeon Master and strangle him. Uh, why am I down to one HP? Because actions have consequences, <laughs> said Dungeon Master. It reminded me of someone scolding an angry, yapping chihuahua. It hurts if they bite, but you could technically punt the thing across an AFL field if you really had to. Besides, we have all established that only the hero would be able to take the sword. No one here is the hero. Yeah, but I'm the closest to the hero in the group. I should be able to take the master sword. <laughs> You think God is just going to be like, yeah, close enough. <laughs> no, we are looking for 100% accuracy. As you have just admitted, you are not the hero. Close, but no cigar. I don't know how many ways you could possibly explain that. <laughs> so DM simply says, no. <laughs> so uh, who talks to the decadry first? Asked DM, much to the horror of Linkbeard. <laughs> I love that. No, moving on. He didn't seem to understand that the Master Sword in this game was more of a cursed item to us. If I had given it a real world equivalent, I'd say it was like lava. <laughs> it looks cool, but you will die if you decide to go and handle it. How about throwing a water balloon into it and making a giant explosion? That's a cool thing to do with lava, but not really, because... If you get hit by a, a fleck of lava, <laughs> it's gonna hurt. And that, maybe it would just turn into rock. I'm not really sure how that works, but yeah, I don't screw with lava either. <laughs> so, uh, we just ignored Linkbeard and went to talk to the Great Deku Tree. We got some good information about both the whereabouts of the Queen and even the Yiga clan that was trying to assassinate her and her baby. We had already talked about taking out or thinning the entire Yiga clan, None of us were too excited about the possibility of killing off an entire clan, all except Linkbeard, of course, who decided that he wanted to be genocidal since the Yiga clan had killed his family and made him an orphan and, you know, probably kicked his puppy or whatever. <laughs> Once we got the information we needed, we talked to the Koroks, did some trading, and these guys healed us for free. Oh, great, now I can go try to grab the Master Sword again. <laughs> Uh, you wait for it, bro. I know it's coming. Dungeon Master built off the maracas thing that Hestu uses in Breath of the Wild, and they used instruments to heal us, which was eh, kind of cute. It's silly. Yeah, why not? It's forest magic, bro. I ain't got to explain shit. <laughs> when we were done, the Great Deku Tree had a Korok guide us out of the Lost Woods so we wouldn't get attacked by the Stalfos, those nasty skellies, and of course the Skull Kids. We were able to return the child to the family and collect our very small amount of reward money and spent a little bit of time RPing with the merchants to see if they could give us any information about anything related to either our main quest or some side quest stuff. The group didn't gain any useful information, but the merchants did offer the chance to travel with them for some time. Aw, hell yeah! Slow ride! Take it easy! <laughs> You tell me where I'm going, that's fine. The majority of us decided to travel with them while we figured out if we were going to the mountains or down to the desert to try and take out the Yiga. We all had valid reasons for wanting to go to either location. Some of us were indifferent. Yeah, that's me. 
<laughs> Linkbeard was still angry that he couldn't get the Master Sword. I really didn't care. I was letting my character develop a softer side by bonding with the children. Halfway through this discussion, we heard swearing coming from the backyard. Uh-oh. <laughs> a few moments later, my dad walked in with his hand bleeding pretty badly. Everyone was shocked that he was here. No one but DM and I knew that he was out there. <laughs> God, I feel so bad for the dad. He's just used and abused. Of course I'm going to feel bad for the dad. <laughs> I'm a dad. I get it. He's trying to form a bond. And the kids are just like, yeah, stay out there and fix the fence. We're playing some freaking tabletop. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually the dynamic, but it's just how it makes me feel inside. Go hug your father right now. <laughs> He's a good guy. So... Uh, where do you keep the band-aids? Asked my dad. <laughs> As it turned out, my dad had finished the fence and was packing up. However, he ended up slicing his thumb pretty bad on a stray piece of metal while he was cleaning up. Dungeon Master and Ludo helped my dad out with his bloody hand, but he still ended up going to the ER to get some stitches. Yeah, beer and a lunch ain't gonna pay for that. <laughs> he's in the hole. God, he's the most sympathetic character in the whole thing. I love him. Dads who are there for their families, dads who are there for their friends get like infinite positivity points from me. <laughs> he can do no wrong. Let me be very clear. Uh, do you want me to come with you? OP asked. See, that's a good one. And then, of course, he'll say no, but you go anyways, because that's what uh, a good child would do, right? I have to make sure you're okay. Let me drive. But of course, uh, I don't think OP does that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you some handy hits for life, really. But Dad says, Nah, I'll be fine, he said as he was leaving. You kids, have fun with your game. And don't do anything that I used to do while we played D&D &D in the Navy. <laughs> uh, what did you used to do? asked Ludo. Get drunk and beat each other up by the halfway point of the game, <laughs> said my dad. Anyway... When I'm done at the ER, I'll be at the pub. Call me when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's such a good guy. And he was in the Navy. It's amazing how just characters can come out of the woodwork and rocket to the top of my favorite characters list <laughs> in, in two sentences. I still think you should have gone with him, OP, but what's done is done, I suppose. When my dad was gone, Linkbeard scoffed. <laughs> He figures he's like that. Now, I'm fiercely protective of my family, and Linkbeard's tone really rubbed me the wrong way. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Some meathead that joined the Navy and only knows hard labor, <laughs> said Linkbeard. I think it was a rhetorical question, Linkbeard. <laughs> she hands him the shovel and he just starts to dig. I bet he only ever had government employment and <laughs> doesn't know anything about the real world. Oh, the irony. <laughs> I rolled my eyes in disgust. So my dad grew up as a farm boy with all his brothers and sisters right up in far north Queensland. It's basically Australia's version of Florida, but with more poisonous snakes and spiders and less guns. <laughs> <laughs> My dad also had a very long working life. From what I've been told and remember from my childhood, my dad has worked as a farmer, worked in the Navy, drove delivery trucks, owned his own pooling and fencing company, and now works for Sydney Trains. He is one of the most hardworking and down-to-earth people I know. And yes, Linkbeard, he will be protected at all costs. My dad has a pension from the government, I said calmly. He's never going to have to pay any medical bills ever again for as long as he lives. Oh, yeah. Okay, they're in Australia. I forgot about that part. So he gets free medical care. Hey, great job. You won out with the beard. <laughs> oh, it's just not like that in the U.S. or the Philippines, for that matter. You got to pay for your own stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, he'll never have to pay any medical bills again for as long as he lives. Because he's in the Navy, his funeral is going to be 100% covered, and my mom is going to have a sizable life insurance payout if he dies before her. 
My dad is set for life because of smart decisions and the Navy. Yeah, well, anyone that works for a government institution is just a cog in the machine. Oh yeah, Olympian. Rage against the machine, bro. I ain't never gonna get a job. I'm gonna live in my parents' basement forever because I'm raging against the machine. <laughs> Uh, whatever you have to tell yourself, man. Ludo took particular offense to that statement. Medical professionals work for the government, you idiot. Don't you go to see doctors every now and then when you get sick? Well, that seemed to stump Linkbeard. <laughs> like, he didn't think that the government extended beyond the doo-doo heads in Canberra. Thanks for the pronunciation. <laughs> I would have never got that right. Perhaps he thought all hospitals were just a completely different entity that didn't get some kind of government funding like they are in the Philippines or the US. <laughs> I was also like 90% sure that the uni Linkbeard was attending was some kind of public university as well, or at least got some kind of government funding. Linkbeard seemed to stumble over his words. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I, uh, anarchy! <laughs> Yeah, it looks great on paper. It's a bit harder in practice. Anyway, Nina said rather loudly, are we going to the mountains or the desert? <laughs> yeah, getting back to the real questions. <laughs> oh, we continued on with the caravan. Linkbeard continued to be moody and disinterested in the NPCs, finally, who were offering a lot of information about where we were going and what we could do there. They suggested that we go to the Rito village, which Nina wanted to do since it was where she grew up, and then we could decide where to go from there. Once we figured out what we were going to do, we wrapped things up for the day. Everyone seemed to be a little annoyed at Linkbeard, or more annoyed than usual, as the case may be. <laughs> he seemed to sense the mood, and scuttled out of the house like some kind of demented fat cockroach. When he was gone, we all gave the DM the look. The disappointed parent look. I know, said DM. He's very... Okay, he, he's a dick. <laughs> he said a lot of really trash things, and a lot of his opinions are pretty garbage. I'm just really trying to help him get out of his neckbeard ways. Sometimes you gotta cut the cord. We see this in Unfortunate Nookie just yesterday. You can't fix someone who doesn't want to be fixed, as I've said many times before. And it's definitely not up to you to fix him. You tried. That's it. <laughs> Ori put his hands on DM's shoulders and spoke some sage advice. DM, some beards can't be saved. Some beards can't be shaved. <laughs> <laughs> Nina agreed. Yeah, look, apart from his weird obsession with becoming Link, he's an average player. It would suck to kick someone, but if you guys aren't super close friends, then really, what are you losing? I, of course, was in full agreement with Ori and Nina, still remembering the lolly incident. Look, if you want him to keep coming, okay. But just so you know, my character is going to start being more hostile towards that asshole. DM nodded in agreement, and we just kind of left it at that. I could tell that Dungeon Master was very conflicted. His savior complex was being called into question, and he needed to decide if he should keep working on Linkbeard or cut the cord in favor of the game, and most importantly, our friendship. Well, let's see, you're weighing one person's enjoyment against the enjoyment of like four or five other people, it seems like a pretty clear-cut equation to me, doesn't it? I think the fact that he's an average player is the weakest reason to kick him out of the game. Like, you could be the worst player in the world, but as long as you're open-minded, willing to learn and try new things, and, of course, not insult people's fathers or <laughs> choices of work, then uh, you could probably fit your way in, you know? But Linkbeard just has no interest in doing any of those things. 
He is the worst, not just because of that, but also outside of the game activities, such as hitting on Nina, whose boyfriend is sitting right there, or requesting that OP draw some lolly Zelda pictures and things like that. So yes, disruptive in-game, disruptive out-of-game, it's over, bro. <laughs> And it almost is over. We will get into part 10 within the next couple of days. I saw that a bourgeois beard just got posted, so I'm probably going to get into that tomorrow. And then I talked to uh, the character consultancy, Anonymous Griper, and uh, we decided we're going to get some uh, slime beard from her in here as well. Kind of where World War Weeb would be slotted, but since that's coming out slow, again, no rush, <laughs> but I got to fill in the cracks. That's why we've been seeing more one-offs than usual, but regardless, that's just all behind-the-scenes stuff. I know you probably don't care none too much about that. <laughs> What's most important is that you enjoyed the episode. <laughs> if she's that young, she's probably never seen a real man before. Hello, young lady. Oh! The Legend of Linkbeard, Part 10. Goodbye, creep. <laughs> the finale. Goodbye, creep. That's just like so uh, passive, dismissive. <laughs> like he didn't really affect you at all, which is probably a good thing because I think neckbeards are mostly looking for some attention. Hello, Reddit. Hi, user tiny hairy potato. <laughs> hairy tiny. Hairy hiney potato. <laughs> God, I'm losing my mind. This is the final part of the Linkbeard story, and as I have pretty much already written everything out before Red X even started this story, I thought I would clear up a few things about how Australian humor differs from humor in other countries. We swear and insult each other a lot. It's also pretty common in the LGBTQ plus community to call each other things that straight people might consider a slur. Even straight friends call each other naughty names from time to time. Though you're only really calling someone those names if you're either really close friends or legitimately want that person to die. I mean, it's relatively the same throughout most of the Western world. I mean, I even see it in the Philippines a whole heck of a lot. If you're close to a person, then you can call them basically whatever the hell you want. But with that in mind, I prefer, this is my personal preference, as I pointed out in another part, I just prefer to call nice people nice things. I like you. Why would I ever call you any of those things? You know what I'm saying? Even stuff like, hey, listen up, nerds. I'm like, ugh. It feels like you're trying to put yourself on a pedestal. That's why I call all of my subscribers friends. Because really, we're all equals. Like, we're humans, aren't we? Let's try to treat each other as such. But again, just my personal viewpoint. I ain't trying to change how anybody does business. So, uh, it's mostly the tone in which you swear that conveys if you're friends with the person you're calling a bastard or if you actually legitimately hate them. So, Dungeon Master calling me a batch or a cow is more of a gentle ribbing slash unofficial nickname. Whereas, if you called a politician that did something that you object to a freaking bastard, then you know that they hate that guy. But again, I, I question why we even need this line. Just call your friends nice things and save the bad name for the bad people. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> I'm getting frustrated already. So I guess it's mostly a cultural thing because most Australians I know think that Americans are crybabies when it comes to swear words. Like some states in America where they absolutely pee their pants when someone says, God damn, when they stub their toe. Well, here I am, stubbing my toe and yelling, God damn mother f <laughs> <laughs> My poor monetization! <laughs> uh, I hope my editor's gonna clip all that. I can't do that. <laughs> so yeah, I myself was really confused that some people seem to be a little confused or offended at my language. Well, I don't think I was confused or offended. I just pointed out that I like to do things a little bit differently. But like I said, I ain't trying to change the way you do stuff neither. I like calling my friends nice names. I just think it's neat. <laughs> also in part 5, Red X questioned why the rest of the group allowed Linkbeard to keep playing if he was an alleged sex offender. Well, this was because Dungeon Master and I didn't tell the others about it. But you should have though. 
Don't they have uh, offenders knock on doors if they move into a neighborhood? It's kind of the same vibe, right? <laughs> Only Dungeon Master and I knew, and we didn't say anything just in case we were wrong and he was innocent. Yeah, fair point. Calling someone a sex offender, especially a man, could legitimately destroy their life. I'm not about destroying someone's life unless I 100% know that they did something worthy of getting their life destroyed for. Yeah, but who's the arbiter of that judgment? Like, <laughs> never mind. Not going there either. Anyway, with that rant out of the way, it is time for the story of how Linkbeard finally got kicked from the group and from the lives of law-abiding society in general. Oh, snap, that's some foreshadowing. <laughs> so, during the week after we all told Dungeon Master to kick Linkbeard from the group, the George Pell scandal was really gaining traction again. As a side note, George Pell is an Australian cardinal of the Catholic Church. He was basically getting in trouble for one of those things that everyone thinks of when it comes to Catholic priests. I remember when I was in England, we were preparing some uh, young English boys. No, he wasn't touching kids, but he was moving the kid diddlers around and covering everything up. Considering how notorious many religious institutions are when it comes to that kind of crap, I am not really surprised. Well, that is quite a scandal. I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole either. We're just moving on. <laughs> Turn a blind eye, much like the Catholic Church. Oh crap, I did it. I t <laughs> this is like a minefield out here. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think it's safe. Also, I, I don't think it's many religious institutions. I think it's basically the Catholic Church. <laughs> as far as I know, they've at least gotten the most press for it. Anyways, we were all in a pretty somber mood about it because, yeah, it is really messed up. And as usual, when this kind of stuff comes up, we were discussing how these demon incarnates should be punished, and some of the arbitrary rules that surround religious institutions in general. Yeah, I know, loaded topic. <laughs> I'm dancing around <laughs> to try not to step on any minds. But we're all pretty much decided that kid diddlers deserve to get their genitals ripped off or out because we aim for equality here. Female kid diddlers are just as disgusting as male ones by a rabid Tasmanian devil and uh, left to bleed out. Trust me, this is uh, unfortunately relevant. I was just going to ask why, <laughs> why this was all brought up. Now I have even more dread for what comes at the end of Linkbeard, man. Holy God. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have did this today. Uh, this session was what DM called a MEGA SESSION, which was basically an all-day session, instead of our typical three to four hour session, which meant that we would bring snacks and break for lunch slash dinner, which was probably going to consist of pizza and Chinese food, maybe some Indian. Mmm, takeout. <laughs> Although after having recovered from food poisoning, the past couple of days I've been sorta of off my game because I've been poisoned from takeout food. <laughs> I don't trust anybody but my wife to make food anymore. I'll, I'll probably forget about that in a week, but for right now I'm playing it safe. <laughs> so we all got set up, most of us shooting the DM these looks that indicated that if Linkbeard didn't change his attitude, some of us were gonna walk. And yeah, I was 100% going to walk if DM drew this out any longer. I have to question why is the dude even there? He showed up? Shouldn't you have sent him a text message between games and been like, Hey bro, you're out of the group. Don't bother coming. Instead of having him show up and making it all awkward by dismissing him face to face. It's not a, a, a breakup, a romantic relationship. Just, that's fine. You can kick somebody out of a D&D &D group through text. It is infinitely easier that way. Oh boy. So we ended up traveling around the mountains for a bit and found Nehru's shrine. Nina and Ludo ended up getting a blessing and got plus two to wisdom and plus one to intelligence. Unable to find the queen there, we decided to head south to the Gerudo Desert. Now, here's the thing about Gerudo. They were pretty much based off of the Amazonian warriors of Greek mythology. They are very matriarchal, and the place that they reside, Gerudo Town, 
does not let men in for any reason, so only Nina, Ori, and I would be allowed to go in. Wait, the giant rock monster man is allowed to go in? <laughs> I guess because he doesn't have any dangly bits. He's walking around naked. <laughs> uh, and yeah, OP explains. Now, the reason Ori was allowed to go in, despite being a man and using male pronouns, is that Goron are not seen as male by Gerudo. In Breath of the Wild, when you do enter Gerudo Town, there are indeed Goron walking about. Some of them are confused as to why they were allowed in, but are happy that they were able to do so. I believe in the Japanese version of the game, there's some dialogue where the Goron says something like, uh, they're my girlfriend. At least, I, I think they're a girl. <laughs> they're talking about another Goron sitting right next to them. So, either Goron are canonically non-binary, or Gerudo just have no idea what they are. I mean, I've never seen a female Goron, so yeah, I think they might be non-binary. I made it all the way to Gerudo Town, but I'm not sure why they let me in. Now that is some interesting Legend of Zelda lore, looking way deeper than I ever decided to look, but yeah, enlightening at the very least. No one protested, since it meant we didn't have to figure out how to disguise a big rock man, but we still had Ludo, Akira, and Linkbeard to think about. Through some good rolls and using some logic, Ludo managed to convince the guards at the gate that he was actually a Zora female. Yeah, cause Zora's got like fish junk. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it, it's not hanging out either. Well played indeed. We brainstormed some ideas on how to sneak Akira and Linkbeard in. In the end, it was decided that I would go inside and buy some clothes for them to change into. Linkbeard wasn't too happy about essentially having to cross-dress. He was muttering about how it was unmanly and demeaning for a man to wear women's clothes. Uh, your masculinity is so fragile, Linkbeard. Just try a skirt on. See how freeing it is. <laughs> I'm just saying. I haven't done it in many years, but for a laugh, yeah, I'll wear a dress. I don't care. <laughs> Akira just shrugged. Just consider it going undercover, or, you know, role-playing. Like, we're already role-playing, so we're role-playing while we're role-playing. It's like role playception. <laughs> exactly! Linkbeard continued to grumble, and we somehow got into the city. Ludo had theorized that since the Gerudo town was all-female, this could also be a potential safe haven for the queen and her baby. So we went inside and had a look around. We went around and looked at all the stalls and talked to some people. A lot of the locals were happy to see me back there again, and I was happy to talk with everyone. Hell yeah, OP, give me that family and friends discount, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got a lot of rupees to spend. Gotta stimulate my local economy. <laughs> we picked up a few side quests and finished a few others. We managed to get a fair bit of rupees and were able to spend it on some cool gear with fun perks. We considered talking to the Queen of the Gerudo to see if she was sheltering the Hylian Queen. We asked Dungeon Master if the Hylians and Gerudo were on friendly terms. Eh. <laughs> he was kind of going with the relationship that the Queens had in Breath of the Wild. The Queens were very close, and it was implied that after the Hylian Queen's death, the Gerudo Queen Urbosa saw Zelda as a surrogate daughter of some sort. And so, it could have been logical that the Queen and her baby were there. God, I, did I miss all this in the storyline? I gotta play Breath of the Wild again, just when I find an extra 200 hours to do so. <laughs> we did manage to get an audience with the Gerudo Queen, and after proving that the Hylian King sent us to find his wife and child, I, once again, ended up being the face of the party and did the majority of the talking, which obviously annoyed Linkbeard, who still wanted to be the leader despite doing very little to institute himself as the leader. You guys just make me the king! That's how you get to be the leader, the king, just whine about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a meritocracy, Linkbeard, and you are not worthy. I forget the reason why, but there was something that the Gerudo Queen wanted us to do before she gave us information that she had on the Hylian Queen. 
something to prove that we were worthy of protecting them or something. We ended up having some more downtime and split the party up to do our own thing. We all did normal kinds of stuff. Akira went and did some more shopping. I took Nina to meet my mom so she could get more information for her book on plants and animals. Ori found some fellow Goron to talk about rocks to. <laughs> Ludo decided to get drunk at the Loga bar. All good, normal, simple activities that a bunch of normal people would do in a D&D &D game, right? Yeah, I guess so. And then there was what Linkbeard wanted to do. Ah, uh, <laughs> why you gotta ruin everything though? It's just kind of his M.O. He wants to do the dumbest thing all the time. <laughs> you know, you think DM would start planning for stuff like this. Linkbeard looked around the marketplace, clearly looking for something. Uh, DM, what do I see around the marketplace? Uh, lots of Gerudos buying and selling things. A few Hylian and Rito women trading with Gerudo. Some Goron and Gerudo looking at each other in a confused manner. And some kids running around playing, said Dungeon Master. <laughs> How old are the kids? Oh my god, I hate it. Uh, DM asks, why? I, I just want to know if they're like teenagers or like young kids. You speak differently to a kid than you would to a teenager. Oh god, Linkbeard. Th this is just a cover-up for the worst thing imaginable. I hate where this is going. Honestly, I do hope that he ends up in jail. I don't have any proof positive quite yet. I'm not the arbiter of life's being ruined, but I'm super uncomfortable with where this is headed. Um, okay. DM seemed kind of worried, and if DM was worried, then I was also worried. I was sharpening my pencil to get it to a very fine point. Yes, stab him now! <laughs> The kids are adolescents, like maybe 7 to 10, very young. Their mother is probably very close by keeping an eye on them. Linkbeard just chuckled. Heh, <laughs> if she's that young, she's probably never seen a real man before. Hello, young lady. <laughs> oh! oh, God, dude. Oh. <laughs> It is the soul cringe that I hate. This is the worst. Cue the very awkward silence as everyone looked at Linkbeard in total disbelief. Best case scenario, Linkbeard was making a joke that didn't hit the mark. Worst case scenario, we were gonna have some real live PvP. 1v6. I mean, this is a point where I would welcome PvP IRL, alright? I equipped the only weapon that I got, these hands, and uh, <laughs> it's gonna go down. Linkbeard didn't seem to care though, and to his detriment, he didn't shut the hell up. Hey, might as well give her a, a real education if you know what I mean. Uh, DM, can I roll to persuade one of them to follow me? Instantly, everyone at the table practically shouted the safe word that DM put in place. JUMANJI! <laughs> this is absolutely hateable. No, we're not going any further, Linkbeard. Pack up your shit and get out. Linkbeard looked extremely annoyed at this and rolled his eyes. Hey, what? It's just a joke. Calm down. Yeah, that's the most immature thing that you can fall back on. It's just a joke, bro. But is it, though? Every joke has a kernel of truth in it, and I do not like this kernel. I throw it in the trash. Throw the whole guy away. Akira glared at Linkbeard like the scum that he had revealed himself to be. You don't friggin' joke about that kind of sick stuff, Linkbeard. Especially with all the messed up stuff that's happened recently. Yeah, agreed Nina. Do you have any idea how much of a creep you look like just by suggesting that? Ah, oh, come on. Don't get your panties in a twist, said Linkbeard. 
You're all just testy because you're on your period. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's only two women sitting at the table. <laughs> what kind of logic is that? Uh, uh, Nina immediately went from a sweet looking young woman who wouldn't hurt a fly to a raging she beast with some kind of psycho yandere look in her eye. What the hell did you just say to me, you brainless limp dick fuck? Say it again! I goddamn dare you! Suddenly, Dungeon Master slammed his book behind his screen. It made a rather loud thunk that made all of us jump a little and look up at him. Dungeon Master had an extremely calm and emotionless look on his face. With no emotion, without raising his voice at all, he just looked over at Linkbeard and said, I'm done. Get the hell out of my house. Linkbeard looked shocked. What? Come on. It was a joke. It's not a joke, dude. Now the lolly commission requests from earlier make all too much sense. I hate him as a person. Don't just kick him out. Take him outside. Put the boots to him. Medium style. <laughs> I don't freaking care, said Dungeon Master in that same cold voice. I gave you a chance. I gave you several chances. I looked the other way when I found out questionable things about you. I tried to be a good friend, but after all this crap that you've pulled both in and out of game, I am so done. Fuck off. Get out and stay the hell away from me and everyone else here. Linkbeard was pissed. He stood up quickly, knocking his chair over as he angrily threw his stuff into his bag. Yeah, screw you! Hey, screw all you guys! You're just a bunch of SJW PC idiots! You can't take a freaking joke! <laughs> I hope you all die! And a whole bunch of other crap that I don't really remember. I was just shocked that DM had finally broke and kicked Linkbeard from the D&D group, and whatever weird friendship they might have had was gone. Overall, I was pleased by this, and once he was gone, everyone at the table let out a deep sigh of relief. <sighs> then we all went about blocking Linkbeard on everything that we had. I mean, it is just roleplay, he didn't act on anything, but God, I really want to see him hurt. <laughs> is that wrong? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of story left to go, so we'll see how much worse it can get, I guess. <sighs> we then broke for lunch and reassured DM that he had done the right thing. DM was still angry and annoyed that he had to kick Linkbeard. It wasn't that he thought Linkbeard was a good friend or a good person. He just wanted to help a weird guy make friends. Yeah, you can't save somebody who doesn't want to save themselves. You can lead a horse to water and then watch it die of thirst. You know what I'm saying? Quite in a literal sense <laughs> this time around. We continued to play for the rest of the day, with DM explaining that Linkbeard heard a rumor that the queen was somewhere in the desert, and his character wandered off and got eaten by a Molduga. <laughs> That's right, wrap up that story arc. A fitting end for a self-centered character with severe main character syndrome. And not a tear was shed. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Our epilogue. I never saw or heard of Linkbeard again, and it wasn't until a month later when I was at DM's place again that I asked what had happened to him. I also wanted to know if DM was slipping and trying to be friends with the beard again. It was then that DM told me everything that had happened, so back in part 5 of this story, DM told me he had a plan and didn't tell me what it was. I'm kind of glad that he didn't tell me because in hindsight, I probably would have pulled a Robert Maudsley and smashed his face in until his neck was just a bloody stump. Uh, Linkbeard, not, not DM. <laughs> well, thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> I probably could have guessed because uh, Linkbeard's the one that deserves it, honestly. Linkbeard had sent DM some uh, very questionable stuff. Like, I had suspected that it was porn, Way more explicit and X-rated stuff than he sent me. Like, Linkbeard sent me hentai, which was bad enough, but Linkbeard was sending DM actual porn, 
where apparently the girl's age was highly questionable. Ugh. We could have just left it that he got kicked out, but okay. Deep breath. <laughs> it's like the impotent rage is rising. Like, DM was worried that ASIO, Australia's version of the FBI, was going to bust down his door and tase the hell out of him. After viewing this material, DM went and talked with his aunt, who, for anonymity reasons, I'm keeping vague, because she works kind of high up in the state's police force. Like, she isn't cybersecurity, but she knows people who know people. Basically, to simplify everything, Linkbeard was put on ASIO's radar, and through weeks of careful planning, he went on to some dark web pedophile honeypots designed to record and catch those sick bastards. Oh my god! He did get his comeuppance! He did go to jail! Life isn't all terrible! <laughs> yeah, that makes me happy, I guess. See, it's always darkest before the dawn, isn't it? <laughs> DM continued to be friends with Linkbeard, with the hopes that Linkbeard wasn't a total creep, and would have only visited said site once to see what it was, and then never again. Maybe he was also trying to keep a close eye on him just to make sure he didn't have access or tried to minimize his access to children. Ugh. Maybe he was just vaguely hoping that this was just a slip and Linkbeard had a very, very sick sense of humor and was some kind of troll that just wanted to stick it to the man or some trash like that. Two days later, after DM booted Linkbeard from the group, Linkbeard's house got raided. Oh, <laughs> so good. And according to DM, Linkbeard got caught for distribution of CP and possession of ice with the intent to sell. That's crystal meth. It's also the most widely used narcotic in NSW, at least at the time. Bro, Linkbeard was dealing? That probably means he was using, too. Jesus Christ, you really never know who you're sitting down to tabletop game with, do you? And here are some other messed up things that I found out about Linkbeard over the coming months. Linkbeard had been stalking Nina and sending her creepy messages from unknown numbers. According to Nina, the second the messages got weird, she would block the number. Ori was also getting harassed on Facebook and had to switch his whole account to private. All these things stopped once Linkbeard was finally sent to prison. Linkbeard had spread a rumor around his university that Akira it was a dangerous mental case that would try and kill someone at any moment. You know, because of the whole Akira punching him in the face incident. He was also verbally bullying Ludo, mostly by attacking his self-esteem and mocking his intelligence. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> if somebody has to mock you for your intelligence, you really have nothing else to come at me with. <laughs> that's hilarious. The Ludo and the Kira thing happened on campus, so I didn't know about either of those. DM also said that Linkbeard was badmouthing me behind my back to him. Not surprised there. Of course, it didn't work because DM always had my back, and I got along with everyone else. I had blocked Linkbeard on my social media, and I have my socials private anyways, and my uni wasn't near his, so... The only times that Linkbeard could be horrible to me was at the D&D sessions, so... I didn't really end up getting the worst of it. I have no idea how long he's going to be put away for, but I at least know that he had a lot of CP and the cops go relatively hard on people who distribute drugs. So as long as no one finds out that he's in for CP, he's probably going to be in there for a very long friggin' time. And if they do find out that he's in for distributing CP, then uh, <laughs> he's going to have a very violent end. A very short time, but a very violent time. I'm not sure which way is better, honestly. Uh, they kind of both make me pretty happy. <laughs> His life is over, one way or the other. On a much lighter note, the campaign did continue, and we had a really fun time. Turns out that the Queen, Zelda, and Impa were all part of that caravan that we helped in the Lost Woods. The man traveling with them and the child were Link and Link's dad and our heroic exploits helped to inspire the true hero to take up arms and save the people, as we had done for him. Balance was restored, and we stopped the Yiga clan from assassinating Zelda and attempting to bring Ganon back into the world. Nina had finished her book on the flora and fauna of Hyrule, Akira became a great inventor and made a name for himself in Hyrule. 
Ori became the foreman for a new mining operation in the Gerudo Wastelands, Ludo finished up his mentor's work and was given a title that pretty much made him the royal court wizard in the Zoro court, I opened up a solid trade route and helped to increase trade and wealth for the people of Gerudo Town. And so that was the legend of Linkbeard, a disgusting beard with a Zelda fetish that did his best to hide how much of a monster he really was. Trust your guts, kids. Stay safe, and remember, some beards cannot be saved. I have a few other stories of encounters with neckbeards that are less, uh, CP-related, but those are stories for another time. Thanks to everyone who was interested in my tale, and to Red X for reading it. It was a pleasant surprise. Until next time, potato out. Holy hell, dude, this really went down to the darkest depths imaginable. I hate... I hate... <laughs> <laughs> Linkbeard is the worst. He should have been called Stealthbeard, man. We had no idea how bad this guy really was. I sat down. I'm like, oh, it's just going to be a fun little tabletop story about a guy who wants to be the hero of time. And now the hero of time is doing time. <laughs> God, dude. That is so wild. It seems interesting to me that all these things were happening to people that were in the game and they just kind of never brought it up. Hey, Linkbeard's harassing me at university, DM. And is DM just like <laughs> keeping all this stuff under his hat in attempts to keep the beard in the game and possibly save him? You'd think at a certain point he'd be like, yeah, you know what? This guy's pretty freaking irredeemable. <laughs> so part of the the blame has to lie on DM for hiding all of these activities but I also have to lift the blame immediately when I find out that he's basically the reason that Linkbeard ended up behind bars. What a freaking roller coaster, man. <laughs> uh, I did not know what I was in for when I started Linkbeard, but uh it's beautiful. I I love it as a saga. It does go to some pretty dark places, but I just love the twists and the turns, and every time you think you know what it is, it is what you thought it wasn't. Does that make sense? <laughs> Jeez, man. Sorry to see it go, but I I'm happy that we all got to experience it together. Compilation probably going up in a month or so. And as always, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Yes, indeed. I do encourage you to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did. That's super important. Maybe share the video around because that's a super big brain play. We've also got a bunch of links down in the description. Yes, my plugs, uh, Amazon affiliate link, Mr. and Mrs. Red X. That's mine and my wife's channel. Uh, the Teespring if you're trying to rock the merch. Podcasts, you know, Spotify, iTunes, we're basically everywhere. Playlists if you're looking for a different flavor from the channel. Yeah, we've also got my social medias, of course, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, hooray! We've also got my Patreon and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I would like to thank them as I do every video, Jerry, Jerry much. So thank you, Robert Waits, Camille, Sarah, ooh, moving up the list, proud of you. Jarhead Jerry, ooh, rah, Logan Wolf, River Jerry, blah, blah, blah. Comrade Ingy, Captain Clown Jerry, Hong Kong, Evan W, Cinema Susie, For Old Lang Syne, Fire Drink, Giggle Jerry, Hee Hee, Are You Ready? Different spelling Jerry, most of the. <laughs> Jerry the Pirate, Rogue, Silent Revolver, The Original Jerry, Jerry, Jerish Kitsune, Matthew Simmons, Satori, 211 Jerry, The Return of the Jerry, The Jerry, Wow, that's big. <laughs> Quiet statement. A jury of juggler Jerry's a justy jargony Jerry, a loonia demonista, Althea Blue, Ananaki, Assassin Pug Jerry, Bang Bang, Atheist Jerry, he's so euphoric, Aurora Wildheart, Grizzly, Bailey Joy, Bearded Jerry, watch out for that guy, <laughs> Bitch Scrambling, Blade the Hero, Blameless Fish, Bloop Bloop Jerry, Saruana Wash, hey, welcome to the fold. <laughs> Commander J Tank, Dennis Dayton, Dinosaur Nightlight, Disposable Waifu, Emergent Jewel. Hey, welcome to you as well. Aaron Lennox, Frozen Over Studios, Gypsy, Hadrian BR. Have a minty new year, Jerry's. And so we did, at least the first week of it. 
<laughs> I'm Slim Jerry, you saw I'm the real Jerry. All you other Slim Jerry's are just imitating. What's going on? Irish Pirate, top of the barn into ya. <laughs> We're gonna get into his RPG story soon. Wait for it. Itchy Nuts, just scratching, bro. A pimp named Jay Crisp, JM Coon, Jennifer Schaefer, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Jerry, Bowberry Banana Fanna, Fowberry Fee, I'm a Mary, a Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, there's more Jerry than the other Jerry's. Jerry, the outlaw mother trucker, John Hero, John Jerry, Jingleheimer Schmidt. Hey, uh, that's my name too. <laughs> Said Boofa, because if you're Boofa, it's free. KJW, Kajow, Kruhi, Miss Monday, Lord Jerry O, leader the, of the Thunder Jerry's, and my lady Nicks, points Katano are also tipping Fedora, and scratching unwashed Swamp Crush, Jerry Talon. <laughs> <laughs> Swamp Crush. <laughs> uh, marble Jerry is currently in no position to dispense Jerryless marbles as they are currently locked in an attic. Oh my god, somebody get in the attic right now. <laughs> Jackass Rule, Mel Garth the Destroyer, Mr. Carrot 797, Natari, Nightmare Jerry, or Gaming Jerry Steve, Panda Prince Jerry, Patron Saint of Chicken Nuggies, Saint Jerry, Rahman. <laughs> Phantom of the Pines, Jerry Kids and Jerry Beth, Professor Tom Moriarty, TSM Kirby, Sarita the Lolita, Saucy Octopus, Stables Yeet, <laughs> aka Jerry Yeet, uh, yeah, Stephanie Goodner, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tobago, Teddy the Belize, Ten Ton Monster, the Jerry's have got your toes, this little piggy went to the game shop, and he's never coming home. <laughs> the one true fusky. Tom, but it's the Jerry on the inside that counts. Viking Jerry, what does the beard say? <laughs> Will Max, y'all heard about Mr. Jerry? He stole the attic door key and put it in a used wifo pillow. You suck, Marble. Oh, snap. Now he's gonna distribute the Jerryless marbles, right? I'm hoping. Comrade Moody, Kira, you're a wizard, Jerry. Redwind, Goose says on Naga Viper, Cy Jerry the Cyborg, Saint's Blessing, a normal Jerry. I got new marbles, now I need more cringe. Feed me, Red X. Yeah, I got you, fam. Every day, we out here. Hunter of Jerry's, devourer of all things tasty, it is Tom, because Tom and Jerry never get along. Admiral T Tech, Alunia, Amara, an elusive wild third inch appears. It was hidden beneath the belly fat. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, we found it. Atomic Jerry Zilla, Breaker of the Tom Army, AZ, Babsy Coon, Banish Knight, Barbushka's Irradiated Jam, Broken Spine, Horseradish, the original different Jerry, that's Cake Jerry, California Jerry Girl, yeah, Chevron 7 locked, Ch 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 Chia, Jerry, <laughs> Chris Mesca, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, Corporal Admiral, Lieutenant Private General, Tigerian Princess Furry, Uru, Jerry. I don't always say it, but when I do, I fuck it up. <laughs> Crip titties. Cuban Jerry. Defon Jerry. Dopamine Dangerous. <laughs> Electrical Fennec. Ghost of Alpha. Heeknot. Heeknot is a typo of Geekbot that happened a long time ago, so the K isn't silent, but it isn't overpronounced. Oh. Uh. Heeknot. <laughs> Heeknot. <laughs> Uh, that's working, I think, maybe. You let me know. HMT Mayor, Holy Berry Jerry, Hydra Jerry, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, my name is Jeffrey. <laughs> Jerry and Tom versus Happy New Year's Weirby Apocalypse, Jerry Jerry Binks, Jerry's evil twin brother, Terry. <laughs> Jerry Aldo Rivera, check out that mustache. Jerry Bean, yum, Jerry Roxas, yay. G Jerry's STI blew a head gasket. Yeah, Subaru's is pretty expensive to fix. Probably, maybe. I never owned one. <laughs> Jerry role playing game. King Tom Smasher of Jerry Zillas. Kids and Kid, Life of a Guardian, Little Ann Woods, Lucia Lovecraft, Midnight Sun, Milk Fed Gimp, Miss Duchess, Not Invisible Angel, I See You, One Leg Jerry, Working at IHOP. <laughs> Uh, or Gabby Cam, Ghosty, Raptor Art, Red X, Dive Into Jerry, She's My Jerry Pie, Go Drink a Mountain Dew, What a Cringe Surprise, <laughs> I think that's right, Schmitty, Schmitty, Warbin, Jaggerman, Jensen, Schmitty, uh, Snary, The Snom Jerry, <laughs> Spoony, The Rogue, Spoopy, Scary, Jerry Tron, Send shivers down your spine. It's gonna be uh, applicable in like three quarters of a year. 
<laughs> just you wait. Steampunk Ellie, the gaslighting Terry. I never paid you on Patreon. You crazy. Oh, crap. Where did all this money in my freezer come from? <laughs> the Necro Jerry Con, the original Jerry. Not to Infinite Jerry and beyond. Definitely. Tuna Fish Jerry, Aquarium Escapee, get that boy. Zest the Boo Jerry, and Tom Promise, Jerry Swiss, oh, no bad Jerry, Tom be a good boy, no Swiss, just facts, Holy High School, we'll head, look up, I mean, I mean, uh, the race video. <laughs> and also, thank you to my $1 patrons, beautiful people that they are. You guys absolutely smashing it on the Patreon, holy heck. Thank you guys, thank you more than words can say. Obviously, I do hope some other people will sign up on the Patreon, but if you can't do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands, for reals. But also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like uh, watching some Red X videos. And I hope that that is what you enjoy. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, bye-bye.